Greetings and welcome to another Black Pill Digest. This is episode three, and we are welcoming today Freeman Fly of Free FreemanTV.com and Mr. Matt Landman of ActualActivists.com and Chris Jansen of EndEvil.life. And here we have my co-host, James Cordner. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Welcome, uh, Freeman, uh, Matt, and Chris. Uh, anybody want to say hello? Hello. Yeah. And welcome to the Black Pill Digest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Let's take a, you know, this long rabbit hole down into the chemtrail worlds of where this all really came from, how it's been represented, and, and how it's transformed everything all the way up to the pandemic. Uh, there is a lot to connect here. I think one of the important thoughts that I had as we started, but it might be the end, maybe you got to work our way up to this, but if the anti-vaxxers, the people looking into that, uh, then combine their knowledge with the, the, you know, the Carnicoms of the world and uh, the Ilana Freelands and started to understand what was going with these heavy metals and all of that and com you know, combine this study into one massive one. But yeah, guys, let's take it down the deep, dark rabbit hole into the black pill and see how, uh, how wild this goes. Because I've been watching this chemtrail thing for a while. At least three decades. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'll be OG. sitting there like a grandpa saying, hey, <laughs> I remember when these things began. Right. Yeah, you remember the blue skies. I do yeah. remember puffy clouds and rain on one side of the street and not the other. Right. I don't remember ever playing tic-tac-toe as a kid in the sky. Never. Not right. once. Right. And now we see it in the Disney cartoons. and you know, yeah, Cars was yeah. the first one to ever put chemtrails in it. And Right. It was animated, right? They had to put it in there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so it's they've been laying it into our consciousness like it's normal. They've been convincing us and you know, oh, that's normal clouds. And then they tell us, Oh yeah, the name of this cloud is uh, you know, uh Homo Cirrus or something. Like it's created right, right. created by man. Like that's the <laughs> what it's but anyway, they people are just blind to truth. And so everybody needs to uh digest the black pill. And you know, we need to go over these topics and so it is the the oldest black pill and uh well not really but it's pretty it's it's a gateway the, conspiracy yeah right and we need really? to like we need to keep a focus on it we can't just we, we can't let our focus go uh we, we need to pay attention to what's really happening in the moment to our bodies and to our loved ones and um so that's why i'm that's why i'm sure mr matt landman uh man <laughs> landman sorry <laughs> I, I'm still getting over that, but uh, anyway, I'm, I apologize. Uh, you created the film Frankenskies because you uh, are so you care so much about this topic, and that's one of the best movies uh, produced on this topic. Thanks. <clears throat> it's it's the best uh, one, not one of the best. Just kidding. So um, I agree. I mean, it's thanks a lot. Yeah, Frankenskies was an endeavor. It's a documentary that everyone should see. It started off in 2000, well, ended in 2017, where my journey really began. But the movie starts in 1920 and goes through the historical chronological timeline of geoengineering, weather engineering, and how we got to where we're at, which is a very interesting place. I think one of the most important things for people to grasp, it doesn't matter where you're at. So I look at truth as like this school of life and you can be at like the kindergarten level or like the PhD level. And all, every one of us is like in grad school. You know, Freeman's probably like the, the OG PhD, but at the end of the day, it's like, it doesn't matter where you're at exactly. You know, you could be just waking up to it. You could be at the college version of it. Kim Trails is still very important in all these different levels. So for there's one, there's more to learn the more you dig. So much to learn, right. and then you start to learn about even frequency and cymatics and like the power of of um, owning your sovereignty and not absorbing chemicals because you're mineralized and you're like better than it. And and at the end of the day, the most important aspect of Kim Trails is kind of like what Freeman said about it being a gateway drug. Is this <laughs> truth is a frequency. Yes. And when you start to ride that tr frequency of truth, other truths become self-evident, right? 
Well, how are you going to get on that frequency wavelength? Well, chemtrails is a very amazing opportunity because it's right in your face. These other things you got to really dig. And then it's like some people weren't even alive when 9-11 happened. You know what I mean? And they're like, well, I can find both sides on Google. But who am I to, you know, make yeah. an opinion on this? Right. It's like they, yes, they were impacted, but they weren't there that day. Like on 9-11, I had a girlfriend in New York City at Pace University right next to the Twin Towers. And I was, grew up outside of D.C. I was right there when that happened. You know, the, the flights were down and I was, I was like all up in it. But for some people, some of these truths aren't that palpable or in their face or important. You know, it's, it's one side of the coin or the other. Like they're either trusting the doctor or trusting the mainstream or they have to like go down some rabbit hole with some conspiracy, what, whatever it may be. You know, I don't even mm -hmm. like that word conspiracy theorist anymore. But, but the chemtrails, if you just look at the sky every single day, you can start to grasp that there's some real evil going on in the world and if you can come to terms with that then this whole world opens up because if there's evil going on in the world and you're not evil you're the opposite of evil you're the truth you're the good and then you're on this frequency of truth and you're on that rabbit hole and then you start to open up all these umbrellas because chemtrails is like just one of this tentacle of this octopus where emf like 5g will break down your blood brain glyphosate will break down your blood brain mercury nano uh, aluminum fluoride like, mixes with aluminum and all right. these things they're all yeah. connected right. so it's and now the next important. level is the you know these and i wanted to talk about that later about you know how those you think they interact and we can all go we can go through and talk about what what are they building inside of us you know what is this technocracy and you know um but we don't have to get there yet. Uh, so speaking of uh, of and like being the opposite of evil, uh, Chris Jansen here his his podcast is End Evil, and welcome, Chris. Hello. Thanks so much, Sean. I'm just so honored to be here, and you know already what Freeman and Matt are talking about just gets me so fired up. I've been talking about chemtrails, geoengineering. I usually use weather engineering. Um, you know, Frankenstein, Frankenstein's was terrific because one of the best uh, ways to explain how real this is, look at the history of this subject. You know, people want proof. And it's like that almost is proof enough in and itself. If you just look at the history of, of the developments and, you know, check out Frankenstein's for that. And, um, you know, here I am sitting here with Freeman Fly, one of my all time heroes. When I first discovered this topic of um, chemtrails and geoengineering, it it was like you guys said. I had I had started looking into 9/11, and I started looking into September 11th attacks, and I was super curious about that. And then I bumped into weather engineering, and I've been talking about it ever since. And what really struck me was the extent of this problem, and I think that's what the way this is like what what these gentlemen were describing so relevant because. So many of these other things we look into, they're distant and far away. There are things going on in other countries. They're uh, global, global issues, right? But this one happens above our head every day, and we're, our bodies are dealing with it. Uh, Freeman mentioned um, Elena Freeland, and you know she describes the full spectrum dominance. So this is our air we're breathing every day and um, running through our body and our systems. And I've been able to identify um, what I think is a huge connection between a lot of people's problems, allergy problems, and all these heavy metals in our environment that our bodies just aren't really conditioned and ready to deal with. And we're having, we're being forced to deal with this poison. We're being poisoned like rats, literally on a daily basis. And, you know, that's real. We can, yeah. we can, you know, we can study this and learn about it. And that should have people fired up and upset. I think there should be people shutting down the all the airports and stopping planes until we get this thing figured out. But people don't understand the extent of the problem. And so here we are trying to educate people and wake them up because we're not going to be able to change this problem just with one of us or two of us or, you know, just Freeman out there and Matt making a documentary is, is what gets people like me fired up. And then I create a podcast and now I'm out here speaking to these other people. But, you know, um, I really appreciate your work. Freeman and Matt, you guys made it possible for me to um, just like Neo wake up in the matrix and realize, whoa, this is way worse than I thought it was. <laughs> you know, this is going on all around the world. This is an organized, um, super deep 
level thing that's going on. And what I discovered when I started talking about it and trying actually to discern the truth, it took me, you know, I spent like a year, two years researching, looking, taking pictures. I really wanted to understand this thing. Why don't people ask more questions about this? And I would start asking people questions. And um, maybe I'll tell you a couple stories later on. But what really blew me away was that people didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to hear about it. And they just wanted to shut down the conversation when I would bring it up as quick as they could, like they were afraid of the topic. And that was what really woke me up. It's like, whoa, we're in like a whole different world here. I'm curious. I want to know what's going on. And these people, well, they just want to shut down the conversation. So if I mean, there's a lot to discuss. Well, let me shut down your conversation for a minute and tell you something. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it, it people don't want to they don't want to realize how black pill it really is. They don't want to know that the government is touching their bodies and getting inside of them. They don't want to have to think about like, oh, you know, the oh, the the coating on that fruit is poison. You should wash it. And like, what? They wouldn't do that, would they? You know, they they people don't want to think that. And so they it's it's obvious like they just want it. the bubble is easier and it's more comforting and uh we're here to shatter that bubble a little bit. Have you ever pointed to a chemtrail next to a friend and uh be like, well, that, and they're like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't see what you're talking about. <laughs> Has that happened to you? No, it's happened to me on a number of occasions. Like, well, that, you know, that, yeah, what, what, you know, they, there's, but I think it might be a good time for me to interject my introduction to chemtrails. Yeah, please. It seems to fit exactly what we were just saying. Fantastic. There's one more layer to this whole situation that we're in here, right? We're not looking at a evil AmeriCorps. We're looking at an evil global core, right? Uh, so as we're watching the masters take over, we got to realize that uh, this was a global event. So when back in 1994, I was an avid, obsessed C-SPAN viewer. I love C-SPAN. I just couldn't get enough of it. I watched it all the time. And I, it was Gulf War was happening. And so that was the first like 24-hour news cycle, getting to watch all the bombs and the shock and ahs and everything that was going on. Uh, so they showed a satellite view with the grid patterns. Now, and this is 1994. This is uh, before, well, as I'll show, before they ever came to America. Uh they were laying these grids in the war battlefield in, in the Middle East. And so right, they like now over, over Iraq, over the yeah. over where they're doing the targeting of the enemy, they lay the grids in the sky and you could and see it from space. In the, right? Exactly. OK. And they announced that uh, they were laying barium trails to track insurgents with over the horizon radar. That's what they said, you know, and I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. So there was a giant, there's a over horizon radar that uh, left out of Texas right when Katrina hit New right. Orleans. X and then it was sent up. Yeah, the X band was sent up right. to the HARP facility, right? It had to go all the way around South America. But the point I'm really making here is that it wasn't American forces, it was NATO forces that were uh, laying these trails in there. And then in 96, uh, the newspapers read, Foreign forces fly in America's skies for the first time. You know, I'm reading these headlines. I'm already awake and aware. 96, I'm, I'm deep into this already. And uh, so I, I said, wow, I bet we get chemtrails now. And sure enough, with the arrival of NATO in America in 96, we were all of a sudden inundated with chemtrails. Wow. So it's quite possible that these chemtrails, being that they're grid patterns and such, and sometimes pentagrams and things of that nature. I actually have a photo of that that I took. In right. Nashville. I've got one. We can show it later. Go ahead. So maybe they aren't passenger liners, but foreign airliners are not airliners, but foreign military of NATO right. flying in American skies. And that's why we've never had a chemtrail pilot come forward. Right. Uh, it's quite possible that this is a foreign military act and... Yeah. Do you think uh, maybe they're drones too? Like they don't even have pilots. Like I mean, you can you can make a big drone too. Like you know what I mean? That yeah, way, I don't see why not? They, yeah. Like I I kind I suspect that might be the case. But I think uh, they're NASA so, drones. Oh, Matt, would you uh, would you like to elaborate on that? Uh, NASA has a budget of sixty million dollars per day, and NASA has a 
public chemtrail spraying po program called care charged aerosol release experiment program. Um, they're right. not, they're not um, transparent with how much they spray, but they have like the barium release rocket patents going back to the seventies. And I mean, there's a, a they've bunch. even got there's patches a, they wear. It says barium. You there's know, all sorts of stuff going on in the, in the sky. Yeah. And NASA is right. not, you know, doing with the money what they claim to be doing. So I think that that $60 right. million dollars per day probably goes primarily into the chemtrail program once you put it all together, in my opinion. Right. That makes sense. Via drones. Yeah. yeah. Right. Freeman, would you like to continue your story? Yeah, we have to know that this is like a multiple campaign, right? Like there's not just one reason for chemtrails and that's uh, often a problem. But I remember when when this started, that this stuff was falling to the ground. And right. so back in the late 90s, this stuff was coming down as a spidery web so substance on the ground. And if you touched it, you got flu like symptoms. And then there was literally a, an, they announced a flu like symptom epidemic. <laughs> and I was just sitting there baffled, like, what's a, a symptom epidemic, right? Like, what is an, a symptom epidemic? But that's what they said, a flu like symptom epidemic. And. You know, this stuff literally was just making people sick. And I don't think they had it right yet or something because it was coming straight to the ground. And uh, we really lived yeah, like it evolved it. over the years. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but it, like it, it evolved from the stringy spider webs to now we have like nanoparticles. And smoke right. Dust and like next one of the key ingredients for the, the, you know, we talk about weather modification. But the other one that I always want to bring in is the barium tracking, like with the X-band radar. So they would then lay these chemtrails over uh, nomadic tribes and such, even in America, such as Gem and Mineral Show or Rainbow Gatherings, uh, just anything that they would consider kind of alternative. Don't and they then consider, they can literally track where everybody goes. Don't they consider Rainbow Gathering uh, terrorists, in quotes, so they're allowed to not give them rights or not treat them like they have rights? Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up in the hospital with what appeared to be a heart attack. And you know, again, compare this to what's going on right now with the you know the right. vaccinations. But yeah. I ended up in the hospital after the 1996. I and mean, 96 was a big year for me. So if it keeps popping up, that's why. But 96 Rainbow Gathering in Missouri. I'm certain that the feds there, because Rainbow has their own federal task force, were feeding barium into the water system there. And I had to cross the river every time to go back to my camp. And yeah. I had an open wound and I got blood poisoning and I had a red trace go up my leg and I got rushed off to the hospital and they thought I, I lost all sensation in the right side of my body. And they tested me and they tested me and they were like, well, there's nothing wrong with you. Your heart's fine. Everything's fine. And I'm like, look, there's something wrong. I wouldn't be here. I don't go to doctors, right? Uh, uh, and they said, well, all we can detect is... Right, that right. you're yeah the only thing we can detect is that you're low in potassium and hmm. that just happens to be one of the major symptoms of the barium poisoning right so, but who's going to get a barium test you know right and does it stay in your blood for that amount of time or does it just do you just have the after effects by the time you get to the hospital you know uh and we don't know that because they don't do the test they just assume you're fine and shove you out the door and then charge yeah. you 800 no bucks symptoms. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I just I did a lot of things like uh, bentonite clay, you know, heavy metal remote reduction. So when I was at the Gem and Mineral Show, and this will be my last tale and let you guys have the floor back, but at the Gem and Mineral Show, this is an interesting thing too, because I travel with nomads. And so the Gem and Mineral Show is a place where a bunch of really rich people go and they spend cash a lot. You know, they're not very trackable is what right. I'm saying. They, they deal in gems and minerals. So, uh, but I, I don't know if that's the reason, but going on what I came from C-SPAN where they're tracking insurgents with barium, then I think that they're tracking these people with barium because they covered the, the Gem and Mineral Show that year, which was way back. Uh, just so thick. They even had a B-2 bomber fly over us, which was just crazy. Wow. And then I told everyone the symptoms that they were going to be feeling tomorrow. You know, your, your joints are going to be achy. You'll probably throw your back out just by moving your arm. You're going to feel like you have the flu, uh, you know, leading them. And then I went around and I told all the healers there that, look, you're not dealing with a virus. You're dealing with heavy metal poisoning. So adjust your, your medications, adjust what you're offering these people to betonite clay and things, uh, selenium and things that might 
remove the heavy metals because they're going to think they have a virus. Interesting. So bentonite clay. And yeah, I'm not a medical expert. Selenium. You just got to look into like getting rid of uh, right. metal particulates in your system. But yeah, bentonite clay seems to have some sort of magnetic pull and it pulls like it all pulls the metals out. out and poop them out. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Okay, thank you for that story. That's, I mean, uh, that's harrowing and I'm glad that you survived. I'm surprised that the Rainbow Gathering actually brought you to a hospital because they're so anti, you know, Babylon. <laughs> you know? Uh, no, I've seen helicopters come down and take people. Wow, really? Wow. Yeah, well, I guess, fight. yeah. Well, I'm glad that they were able to save them. I, I hope they did. Yeah. But they did. In, uh, in any case, uh, it only to have sense. the cops come run them over with the Clydesdale years later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like we i mean you convinced me that rainbow gathering is a great idea and like what it was quite an experience they're true anarchists living outside of the system uh, i learned a lot from that and i thank you for pointing me in that direction um anyway uh back to the this uh so this stratospheric aerosol injections it started it's a military operation and uh we know about how disney is the military so i wanted to kind of start us off with a uh a clip of some propaganda from disney and this is uh it's called eyes in outer space and it's from 1959 james please if you would do we have a timestamp on that or we can run in the whole thing um, we can run it into, we can stop in the middle. We can let it run out all the way. We can pause and talk in the middle, whatever. It's fine. Science factual presentation. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Sweeping <laughs> through an eternal vacuum, through blazing heat and bitter cold, exposed to mysterious radiation. Man-made satellites circle the Earth. Can we do some mystery science theater? <laughs> right. Yeah, we could talk over it all you like. Traveling at fantastic speeds, these eyes in outer space give us knowledge for future exploration and also vital information that will lead to a better understanding of one of nature's great forces, the weather. With awesome violence and destruction, the weather is one of man's oldest and mightiest adversaries. But in its ever-changing moods, the weather brings us beauty. The weather gives us our daily bread. The weather makes possible all living things. All life on Earth will be controlled. And the weather certainly influences our daily lives. <laughs> right. Yes, we have always been at the mercy of weather. When the weather is nice, we are happy. If the weather is hot and muggy, we tend to be frustrated, irritable, and even criminal. But if the even fog rolls criminal. in, we are apt to be depressed. Thunderstorms cause fear and apprehension. Icy winds and snow seem to slow us down. In trying to predict these capricious changes in weather, we sometimes resort to rather questionable weather forecasting devices, such as an almanac, a crystal ball, a gouty leg, and the law of average. He's my back. No matter how we try to predict the weather, 
And of this we can be certain, it will always be with us. Keeping track of the steady parade of storms and fair weather requires the constant preparation of new maps. This is a never-ending task. Weathermen must construct these maps from a continuous flow of data that pours in from weather stations all over the world. In remote, isolated areas, in crowded cities, in high-flying aircraft, and in ships at sea, modern weathermen depend on a variety of specialized instruments to gather information. Everywhere they measure temperature, around you, moisture, measuring and tracking. air pressure, and wind speed. Balloons carry instruments aloft, automatically radioing back information. New radar techniques locate and track storms. And modern electronic computers now play an important <laughs> part in weather forecasting by their ability to store and rapidly process vast amounts of data. Look at how many dials. Adventurous <laughs> scientists are probing the atmosphere itself, climbing to incredible altitudes in their search for knowledge. New scientific tools are being used. Rockets launched from balloons. And rockets launched from the ground carry instruments higher and higher. Unfortunately, these flights last but a short time, and only a small amount of information can be obtained. But now we have more advanced scientific devices for gathering data continuously over long periods of time. Not only from the atmosphere, but from space beyond, artificial satellites. Satellites reach into the unknown with instruments that duplicate man's own senses. The eye of the satellite is a photocell or a radiation counter. Its ear, a tiny microphone. Its memory, a tape recorder. And its voice is a radio transmitter. Here, these instruments are placed in an actual weather satellite designed to record the cloud formations covering the Earth. In this cross-section view, we see how all the instruments have been reduced to an amazingly compact unit weighing but a few pounds. Here is one of the electronic eyes of the satellite. This eye converts the light reflected from land, perception. ocean, and cloud into electrical impulses. These impulses from the eyes are changed into electronic signals that are recorded by this tiny tape machine. Recording continuously for periods of nearly an hour, this incredibly small instrument remembers everything the weather satellite sees. All right, so that's like they're talking about, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because time is, uh... so this is, this is from space. Hours. 11 a.m. EST. A hurricane this is, is forming the 960 miles east of Miami, Florida. If control they measures are Star Trek uniforms will pass inland at Cape future. Hatteras in 48 hours. Control operations will begin within two it's hours, but safety precautions should be completed from Cape Fear, north no later right. than 6 p.m. tomorrow. From space. At Weather Central, the control strategy is mapped out. A ridge of high pressure slants across the eastern United States between two low-pressure storm systems. If these two storm centers are intensified, the high will build up along the coast, forming a barrier that will turn the hurricane out to sea. Stand by. Now pulling in satellite number one for visual check of low-pressure systems. see how they're going to control 20, that 21. Yeah, how come the operator brings out the satellite time? into you focus know? on the two <laughs> storms. Why are they always just one centered over them? Kansas, the other over Labrador. Changing the northeastern low, L21. The satellite kept a little excited. There. With a touch of a button, <laughs> the battle begins. <laughs> on the ground, chemical cloud seeders begin to work the two storm areas. That's interesting. Robot planes seed the clouds from above. <laughs> Robot planes, wow, drones. Exactly. There's the drones. Exactly, drones pouring, spraying shit out into the clouds. The storm centers over Kansas and over Labrador intensify as seeding continues. Now changing over to Hurricane Center HA. 
There were two rainbow yeah. gatherings the where we were hit the hurricane with an ice storm. In the middle of July? Yep. Rainbow... <laughs> wow. In, yeah, in Utah. Jesus. Yeah. How do they do? And like, just like how they hit Texas uh, last year or whatever. Yep. With the... Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that later. That's for sure. It says 100 mile an hour winds lashed the sea to a foaming frenzy. All stations, Sector C. Activate phase two, control plan Delta. It's like nature is the bad guy. We got to destroy it. Right? <laughs> right, exactly. Get it with the military. As an emergency military. measure, the controller <laughs> calls for a salvo of vapor rockets <laughs> to be fired ahead of the path the hurricane is predicted Final to take. Final fence. <laughs> This is artificial Korea taking care of their, the sun uh, from evaporating weather, more water. China with the Olympics. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And they're Sorry. open about it. They're like, you know, they see the clouds on purpose and they tell their public like, yeah, we're doing this to control it because we control the weather. Like we have awesome power. But here it's a hidden, they occult that information. The hurricane. The reports coming into the control oh, center see. indicate that the diversionary cloud seeding over Kansas is now creating a flood danger. Specially equipped robot aircraft are dispatched immediately weird? to release a I high concentration that. of cloud seeding material into the fringes of the storm. The UFO. Yeah. seeding from the ground also helps to subdue the rain by spreading <laughs> it over a wider area. The controller calls for I mean, another view of the hurricane, which has now moved right there. They were they they were spraying certain clouds, electrifying the air from the ground. Like this is some heavy duty, uh, you know, heavy handed uh, smashing of the weather here that they expect to be able to do so easily with dudes in uniforms and a computer screen closer yeah. to the coast. Hey, uh, John. That that symbol on his shirt there, it looks just like the one that the bad guys had in Star Wars. You know, the guys oh, that really? ran the Death Star. Yeah, it's wow. like the same symbol. I don't know. It looked a lot like it to me. <laughs> That's funny. It's but it's what, funny because the uh, the Air Force uh, logo looks like Baphomet if you turn it upside down. Like you know, uh, Leah, is that Leah all Blake like astro mysticism or is it intentional? You know, uh, exactly. Yeah, they're but, they're putting that in your in your brain on purpose. Yeah. Their, their whole like propaganda point of view here is that, you know, this is there's no possible way that technology could be bad. You know, it, this is all like presented as this super positive thing with right. no hint or possibility that we could do any damage or there could be any side effects. It's like, you right. know, it's crazy how far the perspective is skewed in that that techno technotronic kind of right. um, machine world takeover, you know, that. It's yeah. just taken for granted that, oh, yeah, of course we're going to do this, you know, because we can. Right. And they're telling the kids that they're like putting it in the kids' heads like, yes, of course we're going to control the weather, right? My but, favorite is Emperor Ming in the Flash Gordon where he's just laughing like, ah, hit him with a hurricane, throw some meteors down. Yeah, just do it. He's just doing it for the shits and giggles, you know? He's just like, <laughs> we can, yeah. he's just gonna, I'm Emperor Ming. I will just... Do this, those stupid earthlings. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, well, part of that, that silliness, though, that, that makes people think. You know, every time when I, back when I would first bring up the subject of weather engineering, what, what always people say is, well, why would they do that? You know, like like it's impossible that, that there's no way that there could be somebody controlling the whole planet. You know, it's like partly these, these silly movies, they, they put these ideas in our head of this like evil henchmen that are trying to take over the world. And they're almost silly to the point where then people think that idea is silly. There's no way that anybody can try to take over the world. <laughs> exactly. It's genius. Right. One quick exactly. story. It's, uh, it's, it's disclosure at the same time. Go ahead. Right. History Channel had uh, offered to fly me out to Harp, the ionosphere Keter, for those that were right. aware, you know, what they were just showing, these electric beams shooting up in the ionosphere. Uh, the History Channel contacted me and said we want to fly you out to harp you know and i don't want to fly to alaska right and they're like we're doing a whole show on tornadoes and we want to show how harp causes tornadoes and i'm like there's not one person in this field that's talking about harp causing tornadoes i mean it might be a side result of something but 
I, I absolutely just refused. I told them they were stupid, and they actually canceled the whole show altogether. Well, it's good that you that you did that because uh, they were going to use you to smear it in a bad light. Uh, you yeah, know. yeah. Don't trust them. Exactly. Right. Right, <laughs> right on. The they. Yeah, yeah. So the they are going to be taking over the the space and weather, and that's what they're telling us. Walt Disney is telling us a science factual production here. Signal oh, it's number one atomic symbol. Ten right, it looks like an atom. Have you anything else in the area? Satellite station S1 is approaching area. We'll make contact. Looks like Katrina. We got S1. S1. This is weather central. Request video signal at the right, right Coco. An emergency situation has developed in an orbiting space station a thousand miles above the hurricane. A cool Look at man this sends a temporary picture back to Weather Central. <laughs> China just finished their space station. Oh, really? They China just finished their space station. Yeah. Uh, you think and their their secret there robotic space? Uh, I, I was gonna say, do you think there's a little dude in there pointing a the camera down at this? Uh, at the, oh, absolutely. <laughs> this is what we would be seeing right there. Yeah. <laughs> And then they got their robotic space plane up there too, and it drops some mysterious object. You can look that up in the news. China's space plane drops mysterious object. Same oh. thing happened with our mysterious space plane, the X thirty seven B. Right. Uh, it, it went up into space, and an amateur astronomer filmed a, a big explosion near where it was. Huh. And then we got that meteor strike uh, over Russia. So there's, you know. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty it gets pretty black pill. <laughs> but you know, we openly have robotic space planes, folks. You know, right. they're driving around, they're like mini pickup trucks. They're about the they size call it of a Toyota. Twinkie, right? Yeah. <laughs> and China's got them, we got them, you know, who knows what Elon right. Musk has. And and they but, just won't tell us what they're dropping. They just say it's mysterious thing. It's just dropping. Yeah. Us. Yeah. And it makes you worried and scared. Like, what are they doing? And, and Putin, so you know, Putin's saying it could be nuclear. I can't trust you with your space force and your X thirty seven B, you know. So, but yeah, it's amazing. I mean, the X thirty seven B has been orbiting our planet. There's six, I think, of them that rotate and turns, but for decades now, you know, these robotic space planes have been orbiting us, and nobody knows. Nobody follows the X thirty seven B. I do. I still get Google alerts. <laughs> Oh, God it bless just you. landed by the way after a five-year orbit wow they're probably putting new stuff in there to go get more yeah. information and yeah. do more crazy evil stuff to us yeah just saying right well thank you for paying attention <laughs> hey, to it this is actually the very first ever space force hat uh is before they even had their symbol wow, like, or their, like they, they didn't even have the flag that's crazy is that from the Reagan years of the Star Wars? Uh, Sorry. Because, like, Star Wars... Oh, okay. Got your earpiece. Was that from the Reagan years where they're starting with the Star Wars program? And that, was that why they have the Star Wars font on the hat? No, actually, this was just... Uh, I also have the first Space Force coin. Um, this was as I was watching the Space Force be informed. I had the Space War news going on, and I watched uh, the whole NASA combination with the military and the Artemis program and started telling everybody, hey, we're about to have a Space Force. And so when the first hat for that came out, so this was before it was even officially announced and before they had actually shown the flag to everyone that looks like Star Trek. But yeah. uh you know, it was one of my things. Like I tracked and predicted the space force, but nobody right. really noticed. <laughs> well, you're being from Freeman, Orlando. What, what, what was the name of the the show that they ran on Stargate? Right? Weren't you the one that was? Weren't you pointing out how some of the same characters in Stargate were That'll so similar Galactica. to Sorry. actual no, it was actual Stargate. people on okay. the staff? Right. <laughs> Yeah, it was fascinating. I mean, honestly, that came through the uh, Stargate fan group, but they didn't see what they had. <laughs> I just took what they were doing and said, wait a minute, guys, don't you see this? Because uh, wow. they were just comparing people to uh, Stargate characters. But it was the entire Obama administration, including Hillary, uh, were exactly represented in Stargate. 
And I mean, just recently, okay, so let's let's go ahead and go go weird. Uh, lockdown, all right? Like, we haven't gone weird, right? But lockdown. <laughs> um, there was... Well, okay, you look at my, my original artwork for 9-11. I made it in 2001. I have the Space Command seal on George Bush's podium as the towers are erupting behind him. You know, this was an artwork I did in ceremony of 9-11 in 2001. And I was trying to show you that I felt like it was the Space Force, you know, in 2001, the, the, the military space. Yeah, that was causing, you know, the, I didn't I didn't have anybody to talk to me about, you know, I didn't have Judy Wood. <laughs> you know, right. but yeah. so, um, but point being is that this whole space Judy course, Woods, a Virginia Tech graduate, just like me. What's up? Just saying. <laughs> but you know, space Space Command's been around since Stargate, right? Okay, I mean they they right. film this, and Stargate is real. I mean, like not real, but the the Space Command is there in Cheyenne Mountain, and so when. Uh, lockdown came down and pence was with the 15 days to slow the spread and we got a lockdown on this particular day there was a horde of meteors heading towards or asteroids heading towards earth uh like a big group that had never been seen before and they were panicking about it and then it happened it, it was time to hit that day like the the day of lockdown I don't know why we didn't get hit. I don't know if it was divine intervention or what, but uh, you can check this. You can go look at the near earth objects right. on the day of lockdown. We almost got hit, but from deep underground Shay and mountain in space command, we had the combatant commander who had taken over America uh, because we were in an emergency state. So now the president basically was uh, general O'Shaughnessy. He's the head of Northcom. And he's he broadcasts. You can go look at this on YouTube. General O'Shaughnessy on the day of lockdown is broadcasting to us that don't worry about everything. I'm down here in my deep underground base. Oh, and so uh, glad he's safe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, put the mercy and the comfort on either side of the shores for you. Right. And we're putting up field hospitals. Don't worry. But here I am in my deep underground base. And then all those field hospitals were staffed with trauma doctors and not not medical doctors so if they were there for covid you know you'd think yeah anyway uh but i thought if we they were, were not gonna, to get i'm sorry but, but i thought they were going to be there because there was going to be insurrection i thought because they were trucking uh military trucks to all the states before covid hit and i was like there was a lot of trucks on trains big equipment and it was going to all the uh different states they were rolling them through new york city i don't know if you remember that but I figured yeah. there was going to be like they were going to be shooting. <laughs> That's right. why yeah. you know, trauma, whatever. But I didn't even think of like asteroids. Uh, yeah, which is supposed to be the next threat, right? Like according to Werner von Braun. But also, none of those field hospitals nor the Mercy and the Comfort were ever used. Right. Right. So whatever event they were preparing for didn't occur. Thank goodness. But, yeah, <laughs> you I think if asteroids. I don't think that if they pull some asteroid thing that it'll be real. I think they'll do like a harp uh, kind of detonation in the ocean and Project Blue Beam can come out of the woodwork. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think any sort of asteroid. They've been hyping it up so much with movies and all of the normalization with the media. I don't think I think anything asteroid or solar flare that it actually happens will be fake. I'm not mm -hmm. really even convinced that i mean all of the space stuff that we're told is is 100 percent, you know what i mean so especially if they're going to jam it down our throats with the meteors are going to come and all the fear porn about that all the time like i don't think anything if it really quote unquote happens it won't be real it'll just be them utilizing like they're creating a holographic screen up there as we speak with the chemtrails they can pull off just about anything they want including like uh you know, aliens showing up or, you know, whatever they want, really. But I think the right. one of their best plays would be a, an asteroid because they could just detonate something in the ocean and then cause a big shit show, you know? Yeah. yeah. And they've, Let me uh, add to that because there was a long period of time where I was tracking fireballs that did not have a meteor. And so there was this huge mystery amongst the astronomers as these fireballs kept coming down, like the one that hit over Russia and had the big explosion. Tunguska. Right? Tunguska, yeah. Right. 
So uh, there were a number of these. I used to have a, a Space War news section on my website, but so many of the links ended up dead over the years that I just took it down. But, you know, tracking the news, you remember it all and you, you know, so here I am to share it. But there was a, a big controversy of these fireballs that were had no bolide. There was no rock associated with any of these fireballs that were coming in. And then there was a professor in the University of Pennsylvania who was put into charge of investigating this in a more severe fashion. And it just so happens, and I can't find this damn story again, uh, that a meteor fell into his backyard for him to then confirm you know, Isn't that, that <laughs> this was all crazy conspiracy theory. But so to confirm <laughs> what Matt's saying, you know, there was a big controversy about the fact that these fireballs did not have rocks associated with them. Right. They could just be EM, you know, pulsar. Or, uh, you know. Right. I w so uh, I, I took down that video. It was just going to kind of keep going like that for a little, you know, basically they go up into space and then they're like controlling space and they have satellites up there. You know, they're, they were laying that all pretty thick in 1959 with Walt Disney, which is the military we know. And so this, I wanted to lay that as to put that as the foundation of like, what they were, you know, what they want us to think, like, oh, it's a good idea, right? So next, I want to give some history. So I want to play a clip from Matt's uh, Frankenskies. We've got a clip that's about, uh, it's it's a few minutes, but it goes, it 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 lays out all the different uh, programs that the military has done. It's on the books and it's even on camera. So Matt. Uh, gathered these and he put them together uh, expertly for us to see so we're going to share a little piece of your film here today if you don't mind <laughs> i got my Please. copy of franken's guys right here nice nice yeah that's sean, beautiful sean sent me a copy of franken's guys it's great yeah right oh, except for right. uh franken skies is an 80 minute social change documentary regarding the solar geoengineering slash chemtrail agenda that affects every living being on earth. The struggle of bringing awareness to this subject, despite the obstacles of a socially engineered populace and the military industrial complex with its endless resources is palpable in this awakening truth feature. An impeccably timed eye opening expose. The film reveals the campaign to normalize chemical cloud formations via atmospheric aerosol dispersals. Up against the normalization timetable encompassing a, a controlled media in an indoctrinated educational and political system, activists ask the question, is your silence your consent? Hmm. Beautifully done, Matt. Hmm. Thank so you for good. that, James. That's great. No problem. No problem at all. Let's get to the clip. Let's do it. I'd never seen a sky that color. Yellowy, black, greeny, purple. It was uncanny. Oh, it was a day and a night that we should never, ever forget. I couldn't believe that this was happening. First the sky, and then this horrible smell. Really sultry Thunder and lightning and what was horrible. We're in very great danger uh, from the pollution that's coming down over us. And we've been led astray by the military industrial complex. Is the government spraying complex. dangerous chemicals over us from Is planes? the government experimenting with well, our weather? The question at the heart of a phenomenon called Tim Trails is now getting wide to the visible trail left by aircraft Millions of tons of toxic poisons released by planes that during the Cold War, the, government the United States military, military conducted The government is up there in airplanes spraying all kinds of chemicals to change or manipulate the weather, leaving what you see there, and they call that a chemtrail. Geoengineering. They say it puts poison in the soil. Show high levels of these chemicals in our rain and soil. Using planes to spray chemicals into the atmosphere to manipulate what And that's why health department records show a sharp increase in barium and aluminum in California's water supply. We shall propose further cooperative efforts between all the nations. 
in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. The Army's need to know more and more about weather that surrounds this planet is a vital part of the expanded research program of atomic weapons. We all talk about the weather. The Army is doing something about the weather. So for the people that are just listening, this is 1923 U.S. Air Service. A plane is uh, releasing uh, like a, it's almost like a sheet. Just, it's a chemtrail that has a wall of cloud that descends from it. It's disgusting. I would like to take you into the laboratory and show you a few of the experiments that led us to our outdoor experiments in converting clouds into snow. Using our home freezing unit such as this, we can form supercool clouds just like those in the natural atmosphere by taking a tiny piece of dry ice such as this and scratching it so a few tiny fragments fall into the supercool cloud. Long streaks develop. The particles grow very fast. They grow about a billion fold in volume in a few seconds. Many millions of snow crystals form, and we get the same effect as it's So this is by ranging from 1932 to 1957. Not important as far as the fact that it's CO2 is primarily important because it's colder than minus 35 degrees centigrade. This is a picture of the first cloud that we see this back last November, flying in a small Fairchild plane and putting dry ice from a small dispenser in the bottom of the plane. And within a minute, saw long streamers of snow falling from the base of the cloud and evaporating into the drier air below. Under many conditions, of course, full-fledged snowstorms will be produced in this way. Nature, at last, has permitted to do a little something about the weather. Using Project Cirrus, 1946 to mind you is frozen carbon dioxide right <laughs> yeah real scary and at least two people died the total damage was reported in the millions of dollars and the project and its participants were blamed for what happened now that uh freeman brought that up uh brought up katrina and I, you know that relates they, how they can create these uh, these types of uh, uh, clouds that just dump rain. And I wanted to, after this little clip, I wanted to talk about an experience that I had in Nashville in 2010. Uh, it dumped rain for two days, and it happened on May Day, <laughs> a high holiday. And so, but we'll talk about that after this clip. I'll elaborate. On the 15th of August, 1952, the worst flood in British history swept through the tiny seaside village of Lynmouth. 90 million tons of water devastated exactly. the area, killing 35 people and leaving over 400 homeless. 40,000 tons of boulders were dragged off the moors, destroying houses and cars. Porters spoke to squadron leader Len Otley. He confirmed that he worked on Project or Operation Cumulus, which was also referred to as Operation Witch Doctor. What's more, in mid-August 1952, huh. Alan Yates, a lecturer at Cranfield School of Aeronautics at the time, was asked to take part in cloud seeding experiments. According to Yates, the artificial rain fell over Lynmouth and washed the village into the sea. Newly declassified documents prove that Project Cumulus was indeed going on the day of the flood that year. Project Skyfire, a U.S. forestry research operation Proves. concerned with the study of lightning in all of its manifestations. Project Skyfire is aimed at lightning fires in western forests. In detail, uh, the manner in which your uh, work involves you in the uh, 
dispersion of clouds, which uh, happen to have some effect on, or rather bring about thunderstorms or what have you. Could you tell our audience something about that type of work? Laurie, we're conducting experiments in cloud seeding aimed at determining whether or not uh, weather modification techniques might possibly prevent lightning fires. Uh, we carry this on, work on uh, by seeding clouds with silver iodide nuclei. We disperse silver iodide from specially developed generators located either on the ground or on aircraft. Our experience has been that we can do the best job uh, through aircraft seeding. Again, man looks to his own efforts to increase the flow of water. Since the 1946 experiments of Dr. Vincent Schaefer, we have known that some clouds can be modified through seeding to yield additional precipitation. In 1961, Congress directed the Bureau of Reclamation to begin a long-range study of cloud seeding with the aim of eventually augmenting the nation's supply of water. The program called Project Skywater continues at many sites throughout the United States. Eventually, if the research program proves successful, the methods learned will become part of our nation's integrated water resources program. In 1962, during the Vietnam War, American forces responded with Operation Ranch Hand. Over the next nine years, spraying an area about the size of Massachusetts with defoliants, the most notorious being Agent Orange. Large swaths of Vietnam were left barren. Enough food to feed 600,000 people for a year has been destroyed. Despite this sudden devastation, U.S. officials said the sprain created no lasting harm. Milton Ross, a Special Forces advisor near Pleiku, has a son born without the tips of his fingers. North Vietnam charged today that defoliants have produced many instances of miscarriages, congenital defects, and monstrosities among children. The Vietnamese government insisted the cause was Agent Orange. Although that war was long ago, there it's is so lingering anger tragic. about the United States' use of a controversial defoliant spread by American aircraft on the jungles there. An epidemic of birth defects, brain damage, and rare cancers still affecting hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese today. According to environmental studies, still high levels them. of dioxin could still be found in the soil in certain areas and had seeped into nearby lakes. Agent Orange was a safe product when it was used in the Vietnam War, and it's a safe product today. Yeah, right. I got something to say. I want to know how come the fascist pigs have been seeding the clouds. Right. The last hour the airplanes going over it twice. With, the, with, all, with all the smoke coming out of them seeding the clouds. And I want to know, you know, why that stuff is going down, man. And why doesn't the media report that stuff to the people, man? I'm telling you what happened. The planes come over an hour and a half. And they seed all the clouds, dog. People of unknown origin were seeding the clouds over the You know, I don't know what they hope to prove, man. Project Storm Fury assembles a team of highly trained scientists and technicians to fly into mature hurricanes. Scientists working on the project were convinced that they could reduce hurricane devastation using a process called cloud seeding by spraying the thunderclouds inside the hurricane with a chemical called silver iodide. This would become known as the Storm Fury Hypothesis. The seeding planes fly across the eye and into these clouds, seeding the supercooled water droplets from the belt of maximum winds outwards. As the silver iodide turns the supercooled water into ice, the heat released during this process causes the seeded clouds to grow and develop into a new outer eye wall. At that time, the United States Army were in Vietnam. Pierre Saint-Amour was part of the team assembled in a top-secret cloud seeding operation known simply as Project Popeye. In May 1967, as monsoon clouds developed over the Ho Chi Minh Trail, Armand and his team put their new weapon to the test. We get the material so that it fell into the growing part of the cloud and uh, it rained very heavily out of it and everybody was convinced with that one experiment that we had done enough. Project Popeye had opened the door to a new and dangerous type of warfare. 
Some said, if you control the weather, you can control the world. Military planners imagined loading the clouds with radiological, biological, or chemical agents and having them rain on demand. They could attack your enemy using the weather, but deny ever doing so. Allegations were made that cloud seeding had not only made jungle paths impassable, it had also killed thousands of innocent people. But this didn't stop governments from continuing to explore ways of modifying the weather, sometimes for highly questionable purposes. And that message calls for new frontiers, new visions. It calls for us taking the steps now that will make us no longer second in space and in science. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world. It lays the steps that are necessary to provide a nuclear rocket that will produce benefits that are so unlimited that I benefits. couldn't tell you about them if I had all that. July 1976. That was Strange, unexplained blackouts in worldwide communications plague the globe and are covertly transmitting extremely low-frequency waves, otherwise known as ELF waves. It's called the Russian woodpecker because it was essentially that sort of clicking, pecking sound. In 1982, a report by Pentagon researcher L. Ponte alleges the Russian woodpecker signal is actually creating layers of artificial ionization in the upper atmosphere, which means it could have been bending the jet stream and altering global wind patterns. There's been a lot of research in military labs over what you can do with, with putting radio waves into the atmosphere. Some of the research indicates that one can move the jet stream around and thus induce weather conditions. It's no coincidence that the United States began building its own mysterious array of antennas. TARP is the High Frequency Active Aurora Research Project, originally a joint effort of the Air Force and Navy in cooperation with a number of academic institutions of 180 antennas, approximately 72 feet tall, linked together to function as one giant steerable antenna. Steerable because it can aim millions of watts of ELF waves into one tiny patch of the atmosphere. ARP is one of several ELF wave transmitters located all over the globe. Working in tandem, these transmitters alter the weather anywhere in the world, potentially changing the jet stream's course entirely. The intense energy being beamed into the sky by heart sends pulses of ELF waves into the ionosphere. The waves get reflected back down and pass through the earth and ocean. But HARP's startling potential doesn't end there. It's linked to a strange phenomena occurring in our sky. On clear days, you can often see long white lines being traced high in the sky. They are contrails of jet aircraft, actually long, slender clouds. Weathermen are finding them especially fascinating because a theory is being developed that those long white lines may be changing our weather for the better. Details from Roger O'Neill. The exhaust from jet engines, usually seen as long, thin trails of white clouds behind high Don't worry, guys, it's good. It's may good. Maybe a big reason why <laughs> oh, there they're are just persistent contrails. That's all. Yeah. In the Midwest right. now. Okay. Than there were in 1900. The daily range between high and low temperatures has also narrowed. It's good. Guys. In the absence of natural clouds, given the correct atmospheric conditions, jet aircraft in high frequency can almost completely cover the atmosphere with clouds. No one is trying to make clouds now using Great. jet engines, but this study suggests that jet travel is inadvertently making our days more cloudy. And someday, weather researchers no may would try that. use jet well, would try that. to change our Why would they weather. do such a thing? Roger O'Neill, NBC News, Champaign, Illinois. Imagine. It's and a great idea, a though. We might want to. The possible <laughs> now that you can say it. Warming of the Earth. Yeah. By the 1990s, it was a strong oh, climate change. Our idea. Hurricane Gloria Don't give is moving ideas, on the sir. East Coast tonight like a monster out of a science fiction film. 3,000 homes went underwater, and of those, almost 900 were destroyed. From 1987 through 1992, California experienced the most severe drought in the state's history. According to NOAA, an anomaly occurs in the jet stream. The winds appear to change direction blowing east to west instead of west to east, indicating the jet stream coming into the west is suddenly much weaker than normal, causing a drought. By 1995, 
the jet stream returns to normal. Here, there were huge problems with flooding. Intersections and parking lots underwater, homes threatened, people trapped in the river that you see out here behind me, forcing those dramatic rescues. This U.S. Air Force report graphically outlines the military's desire to exploit and manipulate the weather for the purposes of war by the year 2025. According to one of the most harrowing lines in this report, that's right around oh, the corner. Weather modification is a force multiplier with tremendous power that could be exploited across the full spectrum of war fighting environments. Yeah, the full spectrum of war fighting environment chemtrails are in every NATO country. Is that the full spectrum? <laughs> they're spraying uh, anyway so that was a wonderful job uh of encapsulating all of those uh all of those military projects that are proven on the books and to have that quote from lyndon johnson talking about like he sounded like uh you know the evil henchman in a double you know in a james bond movie uh, and he's wearing the black square on his head you know, he's in his Saturnian robe talking to some college like it's really sick. Uh, if you look at the deeper levels of what was what we were watching there. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, does anybody want to talk about that? Uh, does anybody have any ideas uh, or any thoughts of, for that? That did that uh, get you guys thinking? Well, we need we we need to block out the sun. <laughs> right you know uh bill gates says so and he's a doctor so i don't see any other doctors here right so i guess i gotta defer to the authorities um, <laughs> and just be you know going along with what they're saying right it's time to be compliant in this scary time we should yeah. all just do what they say because we should especially be really okay. really afraid and let them make us really afraid right. all the while like <laughs> You know, oh my God, Freeman's on the right track here. Yeah, but so what yeah, we really Freeman. need to do is we need to make sure that we're not that that we're not thinking for ourselves, and that we're, and that we're not seeing the evidence that's right in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Look at I, him think, I think that might get their attention. Yeah, yeah. Freeman's yeah. wearing a mask that says "Chemtrails are not my in gas the sky." Mask, my gas mask is upstairs. <laughs> Uh, they are in the sky. Chemtrails up in the sky. Yeah, it's, and it, I mean, we we should be wearing those in our houses because this stuff is like spraying down and it gets into the system, and then our house just recycles this this tepid this the air that comes in from outside. And we're all get everything's getting rained on. You can't go inside and hide from it. You know, all the air. <laughs> so I mean, and, and that's that's just the tip of the iceberg when you consider you know how we've um, electrified our environment, right? Like we got, we got the smart meters and we got all these devices shooting out all this electricity. And so if you can imagine if all of the air was full of these tiny, tiny little particles of metals and aluminums, and then we electrify them, what does that do? That creates exactly. this like microwaved environment where, um, you know, it could be what managed. happens when you put metal in the microwave. We all know. Right. Might just have people convulsing and falling to the ground under 5G towers, you know, or weaponized right. street lamps. Birds uh, yeah. falling out of the sky all at once. Like, Yeah, that's happened to me twice. Like, what are the odds? Wow. Once in Kansas City and once in Austin. Wow. It was crazy. They were trying to zap you. They, the birds were hanging out near Freeman and they were like, oh, let's get them. <laughs> I never know. Yeah, right. I'm just kidding. whatever. But uh, birds aren't birds aren't real, man. Oh, right, I forgot. Right, right. <laughs> Sky thinks birds are real. <laughs> Thanks, James. You got to keep us on track here. <laughs> You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so I I kind of wanted to talk about uh, I survived a devastating thousand year flood in Nashville, Tennessee. It was it rained for two days, May first and second. May 2nd, I ended up on the roof of the house and everything was gone. Uh, cars were floating by. Huge sections of road were like flipping, just being forced. I lived near this little brook. I was like two blocks away from a brook. 
and there was some dam like overtopped and all of a sudden in a moment that little brook became uh a river that you couldn't see the end of and it was pushing like there my my neighbors had like a shed in their backyard and it lifted up and it started to float away but then it just shattered into splinters and then the the metal roof was pushed in the water and it hit the trees and it wrapped around the trees and it was the loudest noise i ever heard just this metal <laughs> like uh we tried to we tried to put uh my ex-girlfriend out the window to have her climb up the tree but it was the side of the house and looking at her face like my friend and i had each arm we were putting her out the window and her face was so scared we had to pull her in again uh so we had to go to the back of the house because the water was coming at the front at such a heavy um like i woke up and everything was flooded and in an instant like the the water was just up to the door and there was like three steps and we had one of those little ticky tacky houses just one one story and uh you know the water was just starting to come in the bottom of the door and i was like oh that's okay i'll get a towel <laughs> whatever i turn around i come back with a towel and it's spraying all the way to the back wall and the water is it's just rising up this wall of spray like a fire hose and i was like holy crap and then she yells it's coming up between the floorboards like it just came through the floorboards and uh the bed started floating and the cat started meowing and like i pick up the cat and i'm you know trying to get like you know grab my jeans grab the stuff like i'm doing every trying to save all the important stuff and everybody you know she's like yelling like oh we're gonna die and like my friend's like calling his friend what do we do and like but by the end of it like uh matt uh my good friend uh he broke the window on the other side of the house where the water was like rushing around and kind of cyclone pooling up and there was like this air conditioner unit that he could kind of stand on and like no that was on the side actually he had to crawl up the he had to crawl up on the roof like a monkey and he like cut his hand he thought he was never going to play guitar like this was like biblical like anyway we so he crawls up on the roof send up katie send up the cat i climb up and we're stuck on the roof and the only reason we didn't go in the attic is because he had visited katrina years before matt had seen the damage and the devastation and he's like no people die in attics don't go in the attic so okay we'll go on the roof and it's still raining and the water keeps rising and it was like a foot from the gutters like the and it was just pushing everything and we were like well if it keeps rising what are we going to do uh, you know eventually like the, the firemen had like you know rowboats and like they didn't tie up the rowboat and they get up on somebody's porch and the boat floats away and now the fireman needs to get rescued <laughs> like the real idiots you know and there are people further down the street where it's lower and like they're in way more danger than us like and uh you know there were handicapped people there was a handicap person in the next street like they couldn't get up stairs and they were like trying to bang on the window we could see the their arms banging on the inside of the windows they're trying to smash out the windows because they're like afraid the water like matt went down because like he forgot something he wanted to get us sweatshirts and stuff and he crawled down again and the water was like up to his shoulders in the house the refrigerator was floating couch was floating everything was destroyed with this sludge it was like it was there was like a sheen it was like gasoline feces like all of it it's just sick everything was destroyed and uh they eventually saved us after like four or five hours they got a boat to us and they like brought us up to like dry land in some parts of nashville it was just a rainy day like it didn't but it, where we were uh the next street over uh people died there was they got a a little park uh james has got a clip here we're talking about the aftermath of this 
thousand year flood here. At this time, time, five years years ago, ago, a dramatic dramatic scene scene was playing playing out in middle and west Tennessee. Floodwaters forced thousands out of their homes and even 1,500 guests at the Gaylord Opryland Hotel had to be rushed to an emergency shelter. It's hard to forget these images of neighborhoods submerged in water. And not only were homes, schools and businesses lost in the disaster, 24 people lost their lives. In all, 17 inches of rain came down and the Cumberland River swelled to nearly 52 feet. 52 feet. The flood of May 2010 caused $2 billion in damage. Some neighborhoods were destroyed and simply had to be rebuilt. Delray Drive in West Nashville is one of those spots. That's the next street over where where I was. (laughs) Brought to you by BlackRock. (laughs) Chris, that park actually wouldn't exist if not for the flood. Right. All the houses are gone. Now they got a park because they're not allowed to build there anymore. So many people are all replaced by this playground in a brand new park. Just one example of how the recovery in this. Yeah, I heard you say, huh? Right. That's very important because this was happening during the time when they were uh, they were creating like Agenda 2030 in Nashville. They were uh, this part of town had these old houses that were built right after World War II, where it's just like a kitchen, living room, two bedrooms, and a bathroom, just a little box. And it had so much space. And they they called the place the nations, because like all the streets were like uh, state names, like, you know, one's Maine, one's Massachusetts, whatever. And, uh, and so anyway, they called it the nations. And it was all kind of poor white trash people. And of course, I lived there. And so um, they... After this, all those houses were destroyed and people just lost, they had no flood insurance. They just lost everything. And so after they cleared out all the rubble, they built on the same plot of land, they built two tall, skinny houses. They called them tall skinnies. And each one of those are rental homes. And you can have two families on the same plot of land and each house is like six hundred thousand dollar house, and somebody owns them, and you can own nothing and happily rent and for be happy. You know, this is uh, downtown was becoming all like the first floor was like shops, and then they had condos above that. And if you listen to Rosa Quarry, uh, behind the green mask, she wrote the book there. Uh, rest in peace. She talked all about this, like this is exactly how they're building the city. They're revamping these cities and Nashville, it was doing that. And this flood just so happened to make it possible for them to totally, you know, uh, order out uh, KO, you know, make some KO and then create some new uh, housing and new. They built a new police station and that place is a fortress. It is huge. And it's dominating and it's stone and it's like right there and like on Charlotte Ave. Like it's and they that it wouldn't have been possible if this thousand year flood didn't happen. And it's so weird that the rain just the clouds just stayed there and just kept dumping 17 inches. Like an inch of rain is like 12 inches of snow. Like it, think about the amount of pres- precipitation. And it's like it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Sean, it was traumatic Sean, for me. It, it's kind of blowing my mind that you brought up Rosa Core right there. Um, I'm pretty sure it was her that was talking before the. Um, I lived in a town called Santa Rosa here in um, California, and recently we had this huge fire. And I actually was uh, awakened at three o'clock in the morning to evacuate. Um, this fire came within half a mile of our house and burned a whole bunch wow. of Santa Rosa. Um, you know, this is a town where whole bunch of people lived. Firefighters had never seen anything like this. And two years previous, the same thing had happened in Lake County. We've had these incredible fires all over California in the last couple of years. And if you look at a map and the areas that have been covered, it, it almost looks like they're strategically hitting all these areas. And, you know, Rosa Corps was always talking about that agenda um, 2020 and how that they're trying to do is put in high density housing and and you go in Santa Rosa now and some of those same areas that were born, burned and they are putting in high density housing. Is that a coincidence? I doubt right. it. 
you know, exactly. and you look at, you know, the ingredients, you know, I was some somebody who was studying 9-11, September 11th. And so I got looking into thermite and nanothermite and, and then come to find later that what are the ingredients of thermite is aluminum and iron oxide. And how far of a thought is it to think, OK, we are already sus- suspicious and we have a lot of evidence to show that there's all this aluminum in our environment that doesn't really belong there. I was sharing with you guys an uh, um, article about aluminum being found in whales. They found aluminum in bees. They found aluminum, you know, where it shouldn't be. And, and then here, how much would it take to spray, you know, aluminum and then some iron oxide you know um are we drying out the environment to create these fires on purpose i mean some of these things we don't have um straight up 100 percent proof but we can look at the situation we can look they have the capability to do these things here are the ingredients it takes to do these things and here's what we see happening well it's not that far a cry to consider that these things could be happening and likely are if we look at the history of people in power and authority and tyrannical, what would they not do? They're here, they're sitting here talking about it in these Disney films, all the capabilities and the things we want to do. And then we're seeing these effects in our environment um, ramping up every year, stranger and stranger weather anomalies happening. Matt was talking about um, they're dropping just straight up ice balls from the sky falling or gelat. What was the thing about the uh, gelatinous that were making people sick? You know, all these weird anomalies happening. And is that really all coincidence? I doubt it. Right. Let me toss in that right before COVID, the worst thing that was happening on planet Earth was uh, Australia on fire with no water in their rivers and the Amazon burning. This was an artwork made to honor that, which I guess the light doesn't make it see. But oh, it's, uh, that works. We're Fox News. <laughs> uh, AJ Maste, uh, shout out. But, you know, so I kept this print and framed it because this really was the worst thing happening just before COVID. Uh, all of Australia was on fire and the Amazon was burning. And didn't they, uh, aren't they building new high speed trains in like in California, all those where those fires were and also in Australia where those fires were, they were building, they're, they're building in those spaces a new infrastructure new transit systems like is that is that the case to uh well I, you Christian know one right. one thing i do know about is because i was in the construction industry i've been a carpenter for a long time and one thing that occurred to me over and over i was working in these areas where all the houses burned in santa rosa right after it happened and it was really strange stuff i remember right on the street i was working on there's a car with no wheels burnt into the road right out okay and the house i'm working on the it's whole like block all around it, every single house on this whole cul-de-sac is burned except one. And, and it was burned on that house right up to the gate. And the, the gate was swinging while we were working there, you know, because the fence had burned right up to the, the gate, wow. you know. And the house next to it was gone. And pieces of the charred house had, you know, actually left marks on this house that we were working on. Wow. Everybody really, but Mel Gibson. <laughs> we, we, yeah, right? It skipped his true? house, right? Yeah. Is that true? Wow. Yeah. That's funny. And but, so yeah. they have increased, they have in, impeccable accuracy. They can pinpoint, I mean, they can take out a couple towers in New York or whatever. They can freaking, they can land on just your neighbor's house and not yours because you're part of the occult, you know, uh, you know, hydra of evil. <laughs> like, we'll skip this house. And, you know, and that with the melting wheels that happened on 9-11 as well, like. Well, 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 the thing that was really struck me that that I was getting at to, Sean, was that Mm. all this stuff has to be rebuilt. Okay, and and I'm sitting here watching, you know, because we'd be on this one construction crew. We're working in this one empty lot and you can see the guys working on the one next to us and the other one up the hill. And there's these huge areas where PG&E sets up these like massive stations and they've got all their trucks lined up and the spools of wire and every house that gets built. I mean, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars of parts and totally. pieces from the Simpson company. You can't build a house without pieces and parts from Simpson, you know, and I haven't gone all the way in and followed Simpson, but I could almost guarantee there's going to be a connection somewhere to Dow. These same rich people own all these companies. And so right. every time you create one of these huge disasters, well, people got to buy all the new materials to 
to, to rebuild all this stuff. And, and where do you think all that money goes back into the pockets of the people that own all these giant mega corporations and businesses? So even if it wasn't for, you know, specific targeting, even if it was just disaster capitalism, it's still pretty scary um, what that could you know, make you think, well, would people want to make these things happen? Well, there's a lot of money to be gained in rebuilding half a city. I'll tell you that for sure. Especially if you own all the companies that have all the materials that people need to rebuild them. That's right. I think Disney bought a lot of the ninth ward after Katrina. Pretty sure Disney bought a lot of property. (laughs) Evil Hydra and Bill Gates. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, it's, you know, if there was global warming, they wouldn't be buying property, uh, you know, on the ocean front. You know, (laughs) Obama wouldn't have a house at Martha's Vineyard if he was scared about, like, uh, the ocean getting rised and whatever. It's just silly what the... The, the cover story that they give us is global warming. We got to we got to fight the sun, you know, like what James was saying earlier, what Bill Gates is all about. And uh, it's it, it's just on its face. It's silly. I mean, the idea that or like another another one of those ideas is like fossil fuels, like, oh, it's made of dinosaurs. So it's rare. You know, like, oh, we just, everybody just believes it. and We just throw it around. Um, you know, it, Sean, they, it's not global warming anymore. We've changed it now. It, now it's uh, we've changed the term, right? Oh, it's climate change, right? It's but climate they, change. It's not global warming anymore. That wasn't working, so we had. To but it is that. literal climate change because they got a little man in a satellite that's going to shoot down at the planet with a with a gun. You know, <laughs> they're literally changing the. You know, so uh, yeah, I guess we don't need to play the rest of the natural clip, but I just wanted to like show how um, they do. They, they do this weather and then it makes this disaster for people and they get to go in and sweep out like uh, it wasn't just the government that was looting uh, when everybody evacuated and a couple hours later it washed away like it just, uh, you know, they had fixed a dam or something. And by the by nighttime, it was like we could walk through and I had to pull my motorcycle out of the ground like my my ex's car like floated and ran into the motorcycle and it hit a fence and just pushed everything and rolled over the bike and smushed it into the ground. And like, and then her car hit the house next door and then rolled into the backyard. And that huge piece of like road, like ended up on top of her car, like all the cars got scrapped. But anyway, um, like there were people that were looting, they were stealing washers and dryers because all the owners were gone. So all these people just came through and stealing everything. They were stealing the meters off of houses, the electric meter off of houses. <laughs> I'm I'm serious. I was like, wow. And I had to like get my bike out of there. Like, even though it was mashed up, I still wanted to save the thing. I called my friend, hey, quick. And, and you know, and I only was able to save like my leather jacket, my bong, like, you know, like there's only a few things that survived. Everything else is gone. And I just had to move on. Like I did, FEMA did come through and give me money. They, a guy with a clipboard came and he's just like, oh, how much, uh, what you had clothing and a TV. And he wrote it all down. And then they gave me a check for like 2,600 bucks. And uh, I promptly bought a large amount of cannabis. <laughs> but anyway, uh, nice. like, uh, uh, so they, and then later, as, as years, one should <laughs> right exactly free money right uh, it was stolen from my neighbors i might as well buy something good with it uh but anyway so um but i needed like to have like i needed socks and stuff like i you know i like it was devastating mm-hmm. and um so anyway uh it was but you got was, weed like, instead <laughs> yeah well, I mean, a big portion of it went to that <laughs> Matt, so, like, as one should as one should right you gotta deal with the trauma you know you right. need some medicine yeah. yeah all my other weed got washed away in this mud sludge but anyway um like uh so they they did come through and they gave me money but then a few years later uh after the house was gone the house is gone now there. Well, I don't know. They probably got new stuff there, but what last, when I went like last to Nashville, it was just a, a driveway going into nothing. There's just field or well, not like mowed grass. Like, uh, so anyway, um, and that piece of that slab of con of road is still in the neighbor's yard. It's just like, whatever. But, um, anyway, so, uh, they, uh, you know it's totally gone and they uh ah, where was i going with that damn i lost it uh weed right i bought up the can oh yeah right a couple years later they sent mail to an empty lot nice 
to tell me that they gave me two hundred dollars too much <laughs> and I need to give it back. <laughs> but I didn't there's no house there. So like, some some weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And like they're miscalculated or like some Republicans showed up a couple of years later and they're like, well, let's claw back that money. And so they started charging people and like two hundred dollars. I didn't get the letter. And then after like 10 years, well, not for 10 years, but a lot of years, uh, they sent letters to both my parents. And my parents are like, hey, what's this? I'm like, what? And it turned out to be a sixteen hundred dollar bill because of all the inflation. They, we didn't, we told you, and you didn't pay attention. So we're gonna add this fee and another fee. <laughs> so well, that's like what you know when you think about what they did in Texas with that ice storm, and everybody had their bank accounts attached to their uh, gas bills, and then next thing yep. you know. Right. Uh, they were charging ten thousand dollars for your right. monthly gas bill, and it just was direct deposited there, you know, removed from your account. Right. Uh, that happened to, but you know, the lucky people in Texas during that freak ice storm, which was, I don't know, in the summer, early spring. Right. Uh, they, you know, the the lucky ones were the ones that did lose all their power <laughs> and didn't have to pay the ten thousand dollar bill huh. uh, to the, you know, they just, you know. They just took it. Right. Uh, oh, I have a beautiful with, story after you're done. Please. No, please, man. Go ahead. Please. Oh. All Are right. Well, done? I'll say, I was going to say, yeah. I was just going to say that the, uh, um, the, <clears throat> if you don't have a gas stove, when the electricity goes out, you got nothing. Like at least. Yeah. Like, power just went out at my place and I was heated and I was eating. Yeah. Cause I have a gas stove. Exactly. Yeah. That's and you know uh, a, a good friend Leah uh, she lost power in the winter time and they left her with no power for a week. She had to like boil water on the stove to like heat the air of the apartment. It was scary. Been there. And, yeah. And <laughs> so you know, Rosa, Co go ahead. Yeah. So Rosa Corey, who wrote the book The Green Mask and talked about uh, Agenda Twenty Thirty and pushing people into smart cities and all that. Um, she saw the writing on the wall, the elephant in the room, and was talking about the smart cities. And now they're already saying, like, by 2030, they want to outlaw gas generators. Okay. Huh. So, for one, I mean, wow. that's in California and then the West Coast and all this stuff. The West Coast has this big attack on gas because of, you know, global warming, climate change, I like to call it. Right. So, ultimately, like, when you lose your power in the country, you go and you you turn on your generator. That's how you keep yourself going. And I think, so here's, here's my story. The more that the darkness, the evil, the, the, the players behind the scene that are messing with the weather, the more that they do their evil bidding, no matter what they try to pull off, there's always this like backlash because we're in duality. There's always this like waking up of people. Hmm. So that Texas ice storm it was brutal and and it definitely seemed like probably like the quantum computer was trying to see how much it could get away with for one or something and they really did bend that jet stream and smack texas with a bunch of ice and so many people learned about weather engineering just from that experience just from that because it was so full on and real so fast forward like i don't know when that was exactly that texas thing it was like a year or so ago so last summer i went to this reggae show and I was waiting for my buddy, if you guys don't mind me sharing this little story. I was, waiting, I was waiting for my buddy at this reggae concert because he's going to meet me out front. And um, it's like a big reggae, reggae, like outdoor, nice in Southern Oregon, outside Jacksonville, Oregon, the Brit. It's like a really famous spot. So either way, there's these kids that are like middle school kids, like 12, 13, and they're hustling. They're like selling like orange juice and bottled water and coca-cola and like stick Wait. like anything you can like really sell when you're that age they have like all this stuff i'm like hey, hey, hey you want to buy something you want to buy something <laughs> all these people there's like six of them it was real really capitalism funny. right there yeah it was really capitalism. funny and i was i was kind of side by side with them being like to the right people i i i i up people and if the right person see, strikes me i say hey you know about chemtrails hey you know the weather's engineer and i give them a flyer to my movie I don't like to, you know, pick a fight with some drunk idiot. But either way, I, I size them up and whatever. And so the kids are like, what are you passing out? And they wanted to know because I was doing my hustle and they were doing their hustle. And nice. most of the kids didn't care. But the real, like, the real aggressive ones came over to me, two of them, two kids. They had to have been like 12 or 13. 
They're like, what do you got? What do you got? Let me get some of that. You, you got a DVD? Oh, I want one. I want one. I was like, you don't even know what it is. I was <laughs> like, great. you don't even know what it is. Like, can we help you pass it out? I That's like, awesome. I was like, look. Uh, and, like, and I was like, can I tell you what it is? I'm like, yeah, sure. And I'm like, you know how, did you know you ever heard about chemtrails or the weather's engineer? Do you ever heard about this? This one kid, he like steps up and he was like, yo, that's all nonsense. None of that's even real. But in Texas, they engineer the weather. Wow. And, I was like, and I was like, whoa, little gangster kid. That's cool. That's cool. Because he was like, kind of like a little thug. Awesome. And I was like, okay, little man. I was like, all right. I was like, that's cool that you have an opinion. And he's like, yeah, but what you're saying is not real. And I was like, you want to watch the movie? And he's like, no, I already know. He's like, he already knew what he knew, right. which he knew everything was not real, except for the thing in Texas was real, which is, oh, he's getting somewhere. And that's interesting. And then this it's other dude, hey, this other know. kid, he comes up and he's like, ah, 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 and he's got these like real bright eyes. You know, sometimes you can really see it in the kids nowadays if they're like tuned in, you know? And he was like, my parents say Bill Gates controls the weather. <laughs> uh, yeah. and I was like, yes. I was like, yeah, baby, you're my buddy. And I was like, yeah. here, take a DVD, give it to your parents. He's like, okay, cool. That's great. But then, like, so th there's hope, you know, the kids. But yes. like that Texas stuff and anything that they do do, for instance, Hurricane Katrina, you guys mentioned that. Um, Freeman said Hurricane Katrina, that's when they first did the HAMP program where they hurricane atmospheric modification program where they sprayed black carbon soot with drones into the eye of the hurricane the claim was they didn't know what they were doing huh. but they exacerbated the hurricane the claim is they were trying to see if they could quell it but they knew what they were doing they're making it stronger with black carbon soot so there's a lot of weird stuff like that and then really quick while well, it's in my head that disney we were watching the disney stuff and then start start yeah. talking about all the all the space stuff and all that the Disney thing, what's fascinating is they do it when they do the disclosure things and talk about like we're going to control the weather in the future and blah, 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 all this stuff. They do it through like cartoons or some sort of Disney or something like that. That's all because of the ridicule psychology that the realm of conspiracies gets thrown under the bus of, if that makes any sense. So, so we have our egos and our egos really easily dismiss something. If it's like, if we get like clowned and made fun of by our peers, you know what I mean? If right. like, we want to fit in, oh, I want to fit in. I want to fit in. Yeah, no, no. Give me the fluoride. I love fluoride. Uh, everyone's right. drinking it. Right. Uh, you know, it's right. like all the cool kids to, are doing it. You want to fit right. in. And I even noticed today on my social like, media, I was looking like at Facebook. Go it's ahead. like monkeys. It's the you know. It's like a We're all monkeys, not monkeys though. But, but I mean, we it's like animals. But it's like the animals pecking Believer. order. Mm -hmm. You know, like the alpha, like oh the 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 strong monkey. They look at it and they do what it does, and like oh they try to, you know. And then we they all give do us, it though. None right. of us really want to stand out. I was on, and I'll pass the mic right after this. Oh no, I was on. Please. I was on social media today, today, and someone's like meme had like um, a bunch of. Uh, like laugh, like ha ha emojis. No likes, no hearts, just ha ha's. Like a bunch of ha ha's. And I clicked like, and it was, I was the only one with the thumbs up because I was just like, whatever, I don't got time to click ha ha, you know? And because you got to hold your finger over for longer, you know, whatever it is. And I realized that, and then I went back and I was like, I'm going to be the only one not ha ha in the stupid, you know, oh, everyone's going to be like, what's, you, bro. what's Matt's problem? Yeah. That's the a-hole that's not ha ha in this freaking uh -oh. meme, you know? Better and comply. So I went back and I was like, oh man, I don't want to stand out, you know? And I made it the ha, -ha and then later on I was thinking about it. And I was like, I do want to stand out. And I was like, I gotta go find that meme and make it just a thumbs up and so I can stand out and not be the ha-ha <laughs> like all the other sheep. But it's like we we don't really always want to necessarily stand out. I mean, when right. I'm driving, I don't want the police to pull me over, it's, that's for sure. Right. Well, well you gotta I'm avoid the show. But I mean, it's natural to like <laughs> default to that, like do what they're doing. It's just like, and you got to overcome that. And it's good that you did that. You overcame that, that impulse to do that. James, did you, were you going to Yeah, yeah. I, uh, something about what you were bringing up, Matt, there really strikes a nerve with me and the research that I do, because I have children of my own and a lot of the things that I look into and that mean a lot to me have to do with the way that children are kind of being focused on by the these sickos um <clears throat> the reason why in my opinion maybe it's just my opinion but it, it it kind of makes a lot of sense the reason why they go and they put these types of things into uh like a cartoon like a disney channel production 
where it would be like, oh, you see Disney, that's for kids. Give it to the kids. And they say, oh, in the future, we're going to do this thing. Well, they're talking to the kids that will be the adults. And when the right. adult, when those kids that were told those things when they were children grow into adults, it's not something that's – it's going to be something that's just normal. They've heard it all their life. Programmed. So it's, it's programming. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's programming. Going in during the formative years and planting these ideas, or whatever it might be, and, and saying, oh, in the future, this is what your life is going to look like. And by the time you reach that, you reach that point where it's actually happening now, okay, no one asks questions because it's been something. How that did they, we get here? <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, yeah, it's, my favorite example of that, if I could toss in, if you don't mind, uh, ahead. is uh, Space Mountain. Oh, so yeah. I grew up at Disney World, you know, like I was the first person to walk on Epcot. Or one of the first people amongst them. Uh, my parents worked with Disney and stuff. But anyway, um, so I've been going to Disney a lot. <laughs> and Space Mountain, you go on Space Mountain, and you get traumatized in this roller coaster. You know, you're in the dark and you got asteroids coming at you and all this stuff. Yeah. And then you get off and suddenly you're on this nice, peaceful, like people mover, right? You're on a treadmill and you're just kind of coasting along. And what you see as you're just traumatized and now just relaxed uh, <laughs> is your future. And it's brought to you by Monsanto. You know, and we're talking this is 1971 you know, or whenever that was, 70, you know, somewhere in there. And Epcot uh, was Siemens too, right? That's, you know. That, well, uh, sure. the, the big ball was sponsored by Siemens, but that's right. a different story. But, okay. you know, they literally programmed uh, telemedicine, telelearning. Uh, hydroponic kitchens with uh, electromagnetic, uh, you know, uh, dishwashers and such. And Monsanto then programmed you after you were traumatized on the roller coaster. Most people don't remember the experience. I've asked many. Huh. They don't remember what happens as they're rolling out. But they were literally programmed for now. And then the final scene that you see as you exit is cameras all pointing at you and you're on all the monitors. Great. Right. Just like us now, like where you know, cameras are looking at us, and like it's going into other people's monitors. And at least it's people that are listening to us. Like at least we have something nice to say, even though it's a black pill subject. We gotta right. eat the black pill sandwich here. Um, can three, I, I want to minutes. rift off of what James was saying just really quick. He Please. was talking about how the children and they plant the seeds for them, and it almost right. becomes this like. Um, it's programming, but it's almost n nostalgic. It's like, oh, the cartoon I grew up with, it was just like this when I was watching that Tom and Jerry, you know? I was thinking about this recently because I've really been tripping on um, movies yeah. and how programming they are. As adults, all the whole, the entire genre of science fiction, right? If we watch a science fiction film and there's the future, it's dystopian. I mean, right. idioc Idiocracy, Every Blade time. Runner, you right. name it. I don't think I can even think of, which I'm a film major. I love movies. I can't even think of a futuristic movie that's like utopian, right? They're all dystopian. And so then in that same light, you know, if we end up with a slippery slope, crappy future, we'll be like, oh, that's just like in the movie Total Recall. Put a chip in my brain. Goody. You know right. I mean? programming programming the now to think the future is crap right and they they layer it pretty thick they got i mean if you see that utopia from uh england or whatever it's pretty much you know and they're like talk, using injections to make people sterile so that they can depopulate the population because of uh rich oligarchs that like own the planet like you know and and it's all and they put it in a comic book so everybody can see it like we have the hollywood and the media and comic books all that stuff and, and if you look at the comic books of the magician alan moore like uh if you open up the 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 one that he's famous for v for vendetta like on the first page uh he's looking at himself in the mirror you know and it's and on his bookshelf it says utopia there's there's the book utopia and it's like it it all connects you know and there's the yellow bag like it all it all ties into this one big mesh of like they have captured your imagination like as disney puts it i guess they put they give us a bubble worldview yeah you, you Every, brought back go ahead freeman 
Well, I was just gonna say everybody started wearing the V mask, right? You know, like yeah. uh, you know, it, just Alan like the MAGA Moore hat. Didn't mean to even program that into society, and look what it did, you know. Right. But they say that it, he what he didn't mean that. But if you see the first time in that comic, and it was published in '87 or something, they that you see that mask, the Guy Fox mask, printed on there. It says, let's make Britain great again. <laughs> really? That's interesting. And that everybody wears the MAGA hat just like that silly. And, you know, you got the anonymous people wearing Guy Fox, And then you got all those other people with that other meme, you know. And it's like, make America great again. When does it? Great Britain. Like, it's a, they stole it from this comic book. Like, it's anyway. I'm, I'm just saying that it all connect. And then they use then. People like Trump use that meme into their thing, and it all ties into this one, like magician kind of like mind control operation. Uh. <laughs> because really, after all, it's a small world, Sean. <laughs> yeah, um, I was having a, I was having a memory <laughs> of, uh, I'm having flashbacks, man. Yeah, that's what happened to me. I was having a flashback because you were talking about Disney World. In my last trip to Disneyland, I was kind of like, this is with my ex-wife and my two girls. They kind of made me go. I already did it. I didn't want to go back to Disneyland again. It was like, you know, oh, but I thought this time I'm going to go with different eyes and I'm going to look for all the stuff, you know, like. And so I'm standing in line for It's a Small World and I'm looking on the sign and it says right there in little words brought to you by Siemens or, right. or Siemens, you know, and I remember yeah. Freeman Freeman talking about that on his podcast. And so right. this time I'm I'm riding on the little boat going through the warehouse of It's a Small World and I'm thinking about it with these whole new eyes of understanding you know this global if people don't catch conspiracy. the reference uh just so people catch the reference siemens was the corporate logo on auschwitz <laughs> just in case you don't know why it's right. such a big deal that it's you know every ride in disney is sponsored by a military industrial it's corporation by, you know it's right like, right but this and one just happens to also be one that was sponsoring auschwitz right uh, and who is creating the chemicals who owns the planes that are dropping them? Like, you know, it's these companies that are working with the government. It's all one big. Well, I would say this. Power. I wanted to say this earlier. If you want to see some films from Disney, you got to get Disney on the front lines. Right. It's uh, their, their open propaganda for the military operations. And then watch Chicken Little and tell me if COVID <laughs> wasn't the story yeah. it's five minutes long watch it you can watch it on youtube i recommend watching chicken little and education for deaf uh these are yeah. two cartoons for your children that are actually for you and if you don't see exactly what happened in covid and in chicken little then you're not paying attention and that's why the end of full metal jacket it ends with all of them chiming together singing the mickey mouse right. club song oh, oh right yeah, because nice. like they've been programmed with that ever since they were kids you know it's military propaganda and it's changed their brains so far as it's turned into they're in the military and then they go through the boot camp it's all one big system of mind control and it starts from the very beginning and it's all from the military and we're going to see a clip from our, our friend leah boone that, for your programming what do you got right? Right, Princess Warrior programming. And it takes the trauma-based mind control that they do on the ride before they give you the cameras. Like it, that's kind of why they don't remember. What, what was that? What was that, Freeman? That's uh, a that's book. One of my books uh, from Weird, Weird Stuff. Stuff. Oh, cool! Uh, right. I did. I did a, a lot of the artwork. Freeman I did all TV. of this. FreemanTV.com in the shop section. Awesome. Um, but like the the very first one that. You'll see I've got the Clone Wars <laughs> through that. Uh, uh, if you watch that, you'll see all trauma-based mind control going on. And then, of course, uh, wow. Donald with Mein Kampf, because that was part yeah. of the Disney on the Frontline series and yeah. our poor net light and dead Pope, but, you know, to bring about. But I wanted to just uh, point out the store aisles and how they were programming from the pink to the blue. We can all remember that right. from the 80s. And, I mean... And the yeah. 90s, like you got the boys' aisles blue and the girls' aisles pink, and it's just and then yeah, look at that. Programming them all to the transhumanism because the girls are all uh, like fake more, plastic, 
well they're 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 like literally mutants, you know yeah right like, and then yeah. all of the male side is the dark side you never see like the light side of the force or anything it's all but yeah sorry yeah you're right yeah you did some good work with that and that's i'm glad that you showed that because people all need to see that book it's great freemantv.com Right. Yeah, right. and, and your work with it. the Chicken Little, it, it was amazing. I remember that ep those episodes. Um, they were just great. You know, and the thing that's really struck me about being there in Disneyland is their whole game there is to control all your senses, right? right. You're walking into one of these shops, it smells coming in. They're controlling what you're seeing, the visuals, what you hear. And as you're going through the warehouse, if it's a small world, you see they're controlling every little country and every little right. domain. And they got it all in this little warehouse. And there's a little cutouts of animatronics. And when you think about the symbology of that, they're saying, we got this world. You know, we got it in a box, you know. And, and, and we're, we're forcing you to listen you to this song. We're forcing you to listen to this over and over yeah. and over. Right. And like, and it's the embedded way those songs, in my grade, Chris. The way that song is like created. Trauma, that song is created to do that uh yeah. you know like i'm i'm doing there's a something series about of the writer that, are, of that there's a story yeah. behind him yeah yeah they're and they're like it's uh it's the same as sra programming the same as trauma-based mind control they you know they give them those weird sounds and the different in either ear it like it affects the brain this is a this is a studied but anyway we need to get back on the track here uh so james uh could you show us the David Keith clip? Yeah, let's get that. <clears throat> let's get it going. Let's go. This is uh, this guy. People need to see what this. This is a Corbett record. Uh, this is from the okay. core the the Corbett report uh, right. from back in the mid two thousands. Uh, mm. People might remember him. He's now pretending to be a uh, a late night uh, television host to Sick. complete complete Sick. absolute fucking shill. And uh, yeah, this is what he used to be up to. So, like, the important thing to remember about when you see things like this, just a little, a little uh, caveat going into this, is what what he's doing is he's hearing this guy tell the truth about this thing, and he's making a joke out of it. So, what they're doing is they're using he's using comedy to passively manipulate you into accepting the truth i mean this is a that's a common that's a technique of and uh, this truth comedy. is like scary and right because i mean uh what was his name oscar wilde he said if you're going to tell people the truth you better make them laugh or they're going to kill you you could actually spray sulfuric acid in the stratosphere 20 kilometers over our head and use that to stop the planet warming up in a kind okay, wait, of you, ugly you, tech fix. You could, you could spray something into the atmosphere to yes. change. Okay, okay. Spray pollution into the atmosphere to stop it warming. How do you do this? You yeah. start with a fleet of modified business jets and say 20,000 tons of sulfuric acid uh -huh. into the stratosphere every year. Uh -huh. And each year you have to put a little more. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't, in the long run, mean that you can forget about cutting emissions. We will need to rein in. No, emissions. we'll get to it eventually. But in the meantime, we're shrouding the earth in sulfuric acid. So people are terrified about talking about this because uh -huh. they're scared that it will prevent us cutting emissions. Right, and also that it's sulfuric acid. <laughs> we put 50 million tons of sulfuric acid in the air now as pollution, and it okay. kills a million people a year worldwide. Okay, Great. but it'll be better if we put more in. We're talking about 1% of that. 1% more, we're just killing 10,000 more people. You can do math. What happens to the so? So this is basically a threat, right? They're telling us we're going to spray pollution into the sky to kill more people if you don't change your ways of driving a gas truck. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is really insidious. After it's sprayed, After does it just stay up there? No, it rains. I wanted to pause it right there, Sean, because what you're yeah. what you're saying like is is true, but it's also from a different angle. It could be, you know, kind of uh, softening the blow, if you will, like getting people so. getting people ready for for death and uh, seeing it as something that's just oh, necessary. It's just right. what it is, it is what it chocolate, is. Chocolate is a chocolate covered black pill. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a good, yeah. Point, though, good one, Chris. That's really. But, you know, I mean, it, it can be looked at many, many ways. And right. and we have to be open. Uh, we have to be open to each point of view, you know. Well, let's and we're going to hear him. Uh, he's going to in these same breaths. He's going to deny chemtrails are happening. 
people in. Right. Uh, well, how do they? How do they get the? the then how do they get? Anyways, how do they get it into the air? Like how? I, no, it, but like, I mean, it's not. That he's denying that it's in the air. Like, go ahead. Like, well, we haven't right. started doing this yet. We just could. <laughs> right. 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 The way yeah. he exactly. puts it, you know, it would be really yeah. easy. He actually says so it'd be really that's, easy. That's we just have to change a, a few jets. You know, no right. problem. <laughs> that's why it's a threat, and because they want us to change, they gave us, uh, you know, they gave us um, uh, Al Gore and his huh. fear in 2000 whatever and like you know and that so the, it's the same vibration of like oh we're scare us into compliance oh this is another way we can we're gonna spray pollution on you he said pollution and he said people are gonna die like you know and then in the end he's gonna be like oh it's a bad idea i don't think people should do it but why right. is he and, saying it on TV? You know, it and obviously last week he's at the World Economic Forum screaming at the top of his lungs about oh, the the oceans are boiling and the, the, the all this other, <laughs> oh, like, you know, Bill all Gates, this, or, Al Gore, right? right. Al Gore, well, let's, yeah. Let's get to that blood real in quick. His <laughs> yeah, go let's ahead. get to this important point real quick because I don't know how much longer I'm going to make it. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> it's starting man. to fade. Uh, but I think this is pretty important because what's happening right now is a lot of stuff is coming out. A lot of stuff is coming to the surface. People are seeing that died suddenly. Uh, they're all right. turning to understand that they are being jacked with these chemicals that the, this evil overlord has now injected billions of people with nanotech and all of that. And the people are starting right. to panic and they're making sure everyone knows about it. So my point is like, be careful of who the authority you choose to punish these people is, you know, right. as we start looking towards Nuremberg too, um, maybe that was part of the plan. Maybe these people were all fall guys for a global government scheme so that they could blame America and have a global world court to, to justify and have all of that. So I think it's really important that we look at, as we start to try and see all of this happening and people are like, I'm so glad people are starting to wake up. Everybody's getting angry and they're all starting to come out and, and want Nuremberg too. And I'm like, well, you know, just question who the authority is that you are putting in charge of Nuremberg too. I just right. want that to be clear. And the people that they're going to put into the guillotines or whatever is going to be the middle management you know everybody gets mad oh, yeah like, look what happened in nuremberg one <laughs> exactly right <laughs> so i mean it's it's it is probably all a plan and i remember the first time i talked to you at free your mind uh like i had to tell you about this idea that i had i saw in the newspaper on the first of january in 2016 all the newspapers had a burning tower and it was, you know, and Trump was in the running and the 16th Trump card of the tarot is the burning tower. And that is the destruction of the old world. And it's like they were saying they were uh, signaling to everybody, OK, this dude is going to bring usher in the end of America. And like he's the one that started the MAGA jabs, you know, the warp speed like that was he's proud of that says what's one of the most important things he's ever done. And, and he got the booster and everybody should, you know, and everybody and this Q thing gets everybody to trust him. And like it's it's this huge mind control push. And uh, it it makes sense that they are they they are done with America. They're done with this Constitution thing. They want to get us out of the way so that they can have that world government. Why do you like, think we have a poopy pants president? Right. Right. Why do you think that after the president was elected, they had fences around all the federal buildings, you know, and guys with guns because it was a takeover, you know. But anyway, well, they, they did still come got out and brought them jail. cookies. Right. Doc, oh. Dr. Jill did bring them cookies. That's great. Thank yeah. God. And could the leadership get any more silly and ridiculous? You know, that that was part of what you you were talking right. about. In, in your episodes with Chicken Little was that they make the leadership look so stupid and so silly that you know, at a, at a certain point, it ushers in this possibility, like you're saying, to bring in the dialectic and like, oh, we got to come take over because these guys are idiots, you know, and yeah. I mean, the people are running for president these days. I mean, come It'll on. Be, and who owns the That's United why Nations? Putin's calling us Satan. Yeah, yeah, right. 
Even and who like called? And they always called us Satan. We were the great Satan, like right. Satan but Putin's guy. been put out right. as the white knight, so he's right. shown on the magazine covers riding a white horse with right. his shirt off. Oh. He's right. he's portrayed. And he as, but he doesn't chemtrail his people. He doesn't. Oh, he, he's anti. GMOs. He was anti harp back in the day. Right. Like I mean, back, yeah, he was anti chemtrail. He's anti NATO. Right. And everything is wired <laughs> over there. They don't have Wi Fi and all that, like EMF, like radiation. So I mean, at least that there. Maybe some people are going to survive this <laughs> onslaught of death that they're doing to the world. Like, uh, but anyway, so. Well, he's uh, slated is, to be the hero, you know, whether right. or not he really is the hero, right. you know, it's all like a big chess game. Exactly. And they're shuffling the board like they created Russia. They created, you know, they 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 created uh, China the way it is now. And they're going to give them the reins of the world and they're going to have this digital money and we're all going to be slaves happily. You know, whatever. they're going to spray us with this stuff. And before you go, I know you said you had to go soon, Freeman. And I wanted to ask you this while you're here, uh, or while I ask everybody. Um, in the future, I'm going to be talking about the uh, technology that might be rained on us and what it's doing inside of us. And I guess I'll get more into that, like more gallons. And I know you're familiar with that, Freeman. We're going to expand on that later, maybe after you're gone, if, you, if you're going to leave early. But um, what do you think? What do you, everybody, what do you guys think about? Like they've been putting this stuff in our bodies and it's building inside of us. And then they give us the jab. What do you think? It's a gene modification. And the way that these things are built, it's like they're giving them new uh, orders. Like, and the things are, this new stuff is building inside of us. Like, uh, what do you guys think of the combination of those things? Let me, let me, let me say this real quick, just to open mm -hmm. up the floor on that one, Sean. Um, I've been thinking about this for a while now and I've said it a couple of times on, on a couple of different broadcasts, but, um, I immediately go to think about what the human body does to a splinter. Right. And what a human body does, if anyone, the, it, the skin is an organ. It's, right. it knows what should and shouldn't be there. And it, and it has a reaction to try to push something like a splinter out. Um, if <laughs> I know this sounds how it sounds, but I'm starting to think that they that the gene therapy, the gene altering chemical that they were just you know injecting people with, is like a primer to um, the transhuman agenda, where they're actually going to be putting like microchips into people. They're talking about the Neuralink with Elon Musk and everything like that. What do you think the human body is going to do to such a foreign entity? I mean, right. for crying out loud, uh, women... We're going to be the Borg. I'm going to be three of five. What about you? <laughs> like, like, women, like, look, look at the rise in autoimmune problems that have happened in the last few years right. that have gone and, just complete 300% right. or more you know, off the roof. What, what is an auto, autoimmune disorder? Essentially, the body fighting itself right. is what they're saying but what is it really fighting all these foreign invaders right right and it goes so, crazy and it overdoes it because there's so much of it and it's so inside of your body everywhere right right and the so, skin is acting it's doing its business and it's pushing it out right is that what you're saying James? yeah 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 and so i think that the gene altering uh situation that we're dealing with now is is just that it's just it's going after that certain set of <laughs> genes or dna that, that uh tell the body to push this thing out of it i mean really what do you like what do you think the human body is going to do when you try to introduce something like that to it right there's inflammation that happens even if the skin can't push it out there's inflammation that happens around that object like you know i i know people that have like shrap that have had shrapnel stuck in them and it's the pain is i, I, I mean i mean of course the pain is like intense but it doesn't go away you know, it's always it's always really bad for those types of guys. Um, right. Anyway, what's really trippy too is the story of Iron Man, the Marvel guy, right? Like the whole yeah. deal was that in the first one, he got this metal, you know, blown into him from the explosion, and it was close to his yeah. heart, and that's why he had to become this machine because it was the only way to deal with this metal yeah. that was inside of him. You remember his that? Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. destroying his heart, right? Which is our care, right? Right. Yeah, and then and then by the third, but by like the third movie or whatever, he's has a uh, upside down triangle over his heart. 
like the symbolism was right there in front of you people give me a fucking yeah. anyways so yeah. um the uh your question sean so like well i was just gonna say this uh morgellons it's it's creating like tubules inside of it and it's like self uh like it, Re replicating it, right and it like builds you know it grows kind of and they say we're going to learn in one of these clips that it attracts the heavy metals like the aluminum and the strontium and stuff and that's what helps it to build like it's yeah. constructing something yeah i even met with uh dr hildegard way back in the day and she was doing a lot of x-rays on people and there were self-forming nanobots that were forming inside of people. They look like dragons. They huh. had weird shapes. I mean, she had all kinds of x-rays. She wouldn't let me film, but you can look into the work of Dr. Hildegard and see her x-rays and see all of those things. But back in the early days of chemtrails, as we started to get the ingredients listed and we kept seeing barium and aluminum, immediately you got to think on the simplest side well aluminum you know that's what we put on our television and antennas to increase the receptivity right so um you know all like of a we're sudden antennas. you're an antenna right right as they started feeding that and then the barium of course which shows up on the over horizon radar is radioactive and right. what they give you to drink when you go into an mri you know or right. uh which is so, also poisonous like <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. And, but so immediately, you know, I'm thinking, OK, so now we're we're transmitters and we're we're beacons. And, you know, so that's in the early days of chemtrails. I was thinking about how people would try to escape the camps and go into the woods and everybody would run away, not realizing that they have so much barium in their system that, you know, any groups of people can show up on radar so easily. It's ridiculous. Right. That's why uh, they were spraying the fields in Iraq. You're talking about in the beginning. right? Yeah, exactly. Right. You know. Uh, so that was the early thoughts, and now we start boiling up into now with uh, graphene oxide going into people with uh, you know, replicating nanobots, right. and uh, even the quanta and the, the the quantum dots, and and then you take that to patent zero six zero six zero six of cryptocurrencies generated by bodily movements, right? And if I take this to its ultimate scenario. Okay, so I followed the grid at CERN where they have the capabilities of computer technologies that is capable of mind transfer technologies. I mean, it's it's powerful enough, the CERN grid. It's the most powerful grid on the planet, right? Right, but uh, who knows if they can transfer your mind. Well, that's like... what I'm getting to. Okay, uh, okay because it doesn't appear that, that a <laughs> computer can contain a soul. Exactly. And therefore, they can't fulfill their life living forever in their metaverse situation or even just as a, you know, whatever. But trapped in a hell of no way. What if you what if yeah. you convince what if you convince all humans to get into little pods, detach their nervous systems and attach themselves to a, a fake metaverse and then they become an Internet of Bodies? They right. are a network of computer systems, your They're very antennas. body is, to then have soul transfer technologies capable because we are capable of consciousness transfer as a oh. human body. Like we are transferring consciousness on the internet right now. We're like, you know, well, imagine if this was a network of bodies. If we were dealing right. with the internet of bodies, then the elite could live in the metaverse that is supplied by our bodies because it, we can actually. Wow you know work i don't know and that's like, taking it to yeah. its ultimate <laughs> yeah, i wonder if like our imaginations would power this thing like you know uh it's it's a fantastic thought but so that's where you see it going you see it's uh that's their goal what you think is happening i think that's the ultimate like uh outcome that this could be uh because because that's you how know, they, they want to trap us into a smaller cage of that they can control completely like they want to be the well, yeah, they could live forever yeah yeah exactly yeah i think they just want bodies you know they well, like they, they never got to do what we're doing so they want to jam up this frequency so if i may interject i think that all of the different metals that they've getting inside of us all like you're talking about they sprayed the um, tucson gym and mineral fair they sprayed the rainbow gathering 
I've seen them spray festivals too. It's all a spiritual battle at the end of the day. It's a war right. on consciousness. It's a war on consciousness. Bingo. And they don't want actually, I mean, like we're walking dead. We really are the walking dead. They don't want us to truly right. like fully actually wake up. They don't want us to have that heart opening to f realize our full potential and have our evolutionary ascension potential and all this stuff. If they lose their grip, they lose their grip. So that's their fear. I think what they want to do is pause our evolution, sidestep us with this transhuman reality, which they can't just come in and pot us and all that sort of stuff. It has to be consent and there's all these laws and stuff. That's why it's so slow when they're trying to get us to do it to ourselves. But the end game, what they want are bodies. They want, like the devil wants a body. He's a loser. This freak, the devil can't even get himself a body. So he's got to whisper in everybody's ears and try to mess with us and get us to do it to himself. In the end, there's no way that they can pull it off, you know, because the darkness right. shows itself uh, as it shows itself. And then the light knows that it's the light. And then we wake up by seeing the darkness in itself. They can't hide themselves forever, right? They can't hide what they're doing. But ultimately, what they want is transfer of consciousness, so that we think we can, oh, I'm going to transfer my consciousness into a robot over here because I need to live forever because 5G dystopia and chemtrails and all this stuff I can't reproduce, you know, in the future. And then supposedly, like, the Hoover Dam is like a Stargate or something. Seen this? I'm sure you guys have seen that conspiracy. And then at a certain day and time, you know, Satan gets a body. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> that's the right. crazy conspiracy. So that's my little like Rosemary's baby. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's my little transhumanism, little take on it all. But I mean, in game, like God is in charge and those fallen angels and the devil. What, what No soup for you. No body for you. <laughs> it's not happening, man. It's not right. happening. So they can try all they want. You know? It's right. just a game where the dark wakes up the light no matter what it tries to do. Even if it doesn't want to, its foot goes in its mouth no matter what, you know. Absolutely. You know, thinking about that, like uh, they could tell people, oh, yeah, we're going to put your consciousness in the computer and you'll live like it'll be like uh, Vanilla Sky, you know, like that movie. And it'll be great and fun. And then they, they wheel them in just like uh, just like Soylent Green. And the guy's like, yay. Uh, and he gets to see this nature and he's like, OK, I'm dying now. Ah, uh, And then he's done it's like okay depopulation thank you you know next like who cares if they go into a you know a consciousness thing like they can just kill them off and they got computers now and like let's have our, our you know let's just own the world completely and get rid of all these useless eaters like wheel them in so only greenest people yeah i fully expect to be monsanto <laughs> fertilizer in the end you know right yeah yeah but guys it's, it's been awesome but really i've got to run uh God I'm bless you for staying in. for I'm two starving. hours, man. Thank yeah. you so much, Freeman. That's great. Thank you. And can you tell people uh, where to find you, freemantv.com? And is there anything that you uh, look forward to, any good shows that you got in the future? Like, you want to say something about your stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, freemantv.com. Come and listen to the show. Scroll all the way down that front page, man. There's no such thing as an old show. So just scroll all the way down. It's like 36 pages or maybe more. Uh, <laughs> 18 years of this and so um but now that i'm banned off of uh youtube all of my videos have been going up on rockfin so if you want to see my lectures and my video productions and such they're all on rockfin now maybe eventually i mean people are free to put my videos wherever they want you know please feel free uh, but right now i've just been putting them up on rockfin having a good time with that community they're a pretty amazing group and uh so that's awesome. I'm glad that you found a home for your content that can be that you can link and embed and like you don't have to worry about it's going to get erased sometime or whatever, because like all, all of your old shows must be the one they have a YouTube link, you know, if you have like a video on your website. And that embed is is dead now. And you got They're all like, gone. All gone. Dude, yeah. It's 18 sad. years. You know, longest running talk show on YouTube. Right. And uh, yeah, gone. Well, you're still doing the good work, man, and you're here and you're a, like, I'm so glad you joined us and you're a dear friend of mine and I'm so glad that you are here. And Yeah, I love you all guys, man. Everybody here, you're all, you know, yeah, 
great. Hey, hey, Freeman, let that. me just say one quick little thing before you take off. You know, sure, um, you've been you've been such a big hero to me. And I'm thinking back to 2000. I think it was 2011, 2012. I'm listening to your podcast. At that time, I worked at the Superior Court and um, I was a maintenance man. And so I had the keys and I used to go up on the roof and take pictures of the sky because of the chemtrails and everything. And I remember this one particular day where I had just got some new sunglasses. And, you know, when you get the polarized sunglasses and you look up at the sky, sometimes you see the oil streaks around the chemtrails. And I remember this one day where I'd listen to your podcast while I'm working at the court. And I'm walking down the street at the county center trying to get people to put on my polarized glasses. And mm-hmm. it was like straight out of the movie, you know. And I remember <laughs> getting this one lady to put them on. I'm like, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> you should have beat her up like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> beat up an old lady. Where are the glasses? <laughs> yeah, but, That's you know, the, the biggest thanks, oh, Raymond. Thanks so much for all your work. I remember all the days of being on the Friendship Agenda and, and um, listening to all your shows and you've really impacted my life and, and um, I really appreciate it. And just so you know, you woke somebody up and I'm out here speaking the truth and, and working on this stuff too, thanks to your encouragement and help. So um, I really appreciate it. And I look yeah, forward to hopefully you. we can chat again one day. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We'll do more of this. I hope you guys all want to. Yes, please. Yeah, we should. Yeah, absolutely. Freeman. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here tonight too, man. You know, it's, it's not a it's it's a kind of a little bit of a a rodeo of a show <laughs> so yeah, yeah like we no, had so great. many clips and whatever hey yeah. i might be in at arno and uh, right. in two weeks i i just got an invite and i might just go uh, hey why not Good. Uh, so uh, yeah i could be out there uh, i'll support yeah, you course. i'll support your wear at anarchopoco yeah that's the true anarchy <laughs> shirt right there god bless you yeah man that's fantastic and i hope you represent the real heart people you know that place uh you know i've done a couple shows about it and i think it's infested i think there's some government in there trying to do some psyop stuff and so you know wear that like wear your heart strong and be the beacon so they can see the real you know and be yeah. your true self brother i'm so yeah, glad yeah you. maybe we'll oh, read the back yeah, it's got the true definition. That's right. God yeah, let's bless. give a shout out to Jen Lee, to Cult Priestess, and all the wonderful people that have been chatting here along the way with us. I, I, I've been reading along, guys, and thank you so much. And yes, Obama's a clone. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till Michelle comes out and you all learn of Queen Just T. Wait. <laughs> Arcanaten, right? Arcanaten. Arcanaten. Yeah. Go watch my episode with Howard Stern. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Classic. But you can't talk about Arca- Akhenaten because I own that topic. <laughs> you no, Howard Stern. <laughs> no, I know. I know what I was talking about. Oh, the other guy. Yeah. You know, but we don't even... That's yeah. funny. Yeah. That Howard Stern got out to millions of people. Oh, that was hilarious. You know, that was great. I heard your voice. Make him laugh, right? Oscar even... Wilde, man. One of my favorite Masons. That's right. Yeah. 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 God bless you, Freeman. You're All right, guys. Happen. Have a good night. Thank you. See again. you next time. Take care. Awesome. So, uh, okay, we have uh, the rest of the David Keith clip, if you wanted to play that. And uh, after that, we have a whistleblower that'll tell us about the uh, the actual chemicals that she's seeing. Uh, so please, James, if you would. Uh, yep. Keith. Pick it right up here. There's just a oh, little bit. But it's a but tiny, it's a tiny, tiny edition of what we're already doing. Is there any possible way this could come back to bite us in the end? It actually turns out to be an old idea. This really? was known since President Johnson. You ever look at those planes up there? They have contrails behind them. Maybe all those planes are the contrails. Maybe they're actually spraying chemicals into the atmosphere right now, and Uncle Sam isn't telling us. Seems extremely right. unlikely. The that the United the government... States is not telling something to its citizens? That seems extremely <laughs> likely to me. Read the newspaper. I think they might have your idea already. Right. So, yeah, that's David Keith saying, oh, that's so unlikely that they would do this thing that's cheap and it kills people and it's, you know, great and it's going to help us from the sun. Like, it actually traps heat in. It makes it warmer. Like, they heat the ion, they heat the ionosphere with harp i mean it makes the the atmosphere warmer like it's so foolish for them to tell us that oh the sun but anyway 
So uh, if anybody doesn't, if does anybody want to say anything about this uh, puppet guy, David Keith? Yo, I hate David Keith. Can I talk bad about him? Am I allowed to curse? Am I allowed to break things or what? Oh, yeah. Am I allowed to curse? Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay, fuck that guy for one. He's (laughs) he's a brainwashed piece of shit. So um, uh, in 2018... Um, Bill Gates was to do an experiment in Tucson, Arizona, dimming the sun, uh, spraying aluminum. Um, right. So, um, so here's the deal: Harvard professor, he's a teacher at Harvard. Harvard right. professor, and from Calgary, Canada, he's not even American. This Calgary Canadian brainwashed MK Ultra puppet named David W. Keith. He gets his funding from Bill Gates publicly. So Bill wow. Gates is the sugar daddy of geoengineering, and it's public. It's not Bill Gates, Melinda Gates Foundation. It's private or public, like straight pocket donations from Bill Gates, hundreds of millions of dollars. So he hands it straight to David Keith, and David Keith is his little front man. And David Keith goes running around the world saying, we need to increase the reflectivity of the earth. We need to put up an artificial cloud layer. We could do it with diamond dust, we could, but but diamonds are expensive, and you're gonna have to pay that with your tax bills. They're we actually not. Do, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. The so is the, the monopoly, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, girls' best friend. Yeah, everything's everything's a conspiracy. I bet. I bet. I, I dude. I bet. I bet diamonds are freaking for free. Okay. Anyway, right. Right. forever. Man. Hey, I got There's a friend in diamonds. I got a friend in the diamond beach. business. Like that, it's just that all the mines are owned by one company. So no, they, yeah, they they limit the right. supply and then they right, yeah, right, they and the the whole propaganda. Like you must you got to pay this much of your salary for whatever to prove Every your kiss love. Begins like, with K. Okay. Right, Ugh, gross. Yeah, they should well, give we, you money for saying that, James. You just advertise marketing. <laughs> yeah. forever. So. Sorry, Jay. Or, sorry, Matt. Go ahead. No, it's cool. So David Keith, um, through Bill Gates, he like runs around the world and says we need to put up. Um, maybe space mirrors, maybe sulfur. So in that clip, he was talking about the real thing that we could use is sulfur and it's to mimic a volcanic eruption. It'll kill people and make acid rain. It's just like a volcano, but don't worry. It'll make the clouds dark and make it nice, cool, because global warming is like scary. You know, that's the whole like, <laughs> right. that's the whole, like scientific little thing he's doing. Right. And everyone's just like, the oh, geo- flu. Do the invisible flu is scary. And the the invisible man in the sky is scary. Well, I mean, you know, not to like, to, you know, I mean, just the way that they use fear. You must give the church money, or you must give the government money. To, we need to tax carbon, and that's going to save the world. Like, how does that even make sense? You know, like these people, they drink blood. You know, they. I mean, why do we? It's so crazy that. They yeah, why do we take orders? From pedophile, I have no idea. Right. No idea. I mean, we just like take these lies that they give us and they just say, Oh, it is, you know, it the world is warming, you know, it is gonna we're gonna have the seas boiling by 2020. Like that's obviously not true. Like sea I mean levels have never risen an dude, inch. Exactly. They're you know, Bill Nye, the whatever the propaganda guy. The science uh, guy. Yeah, he had an episode where uh, they showed Venice, Italy, and they're talking about how scary it is, you know, like, oh, the water rose and my books got wet or whatever. And this this place has been built like that since the 1600s. Mm-hmm. And the water level is still the same level as the curb like that but is built it, to that in the 1600s. The and water like, levels the water rising. surge. The water surge from the storm that pushes the water in, but you know it's uh-huh. not the water level is the same. It's always been since the 1600s, and they're showing it on camera as they're telling us the water is rising. Oh, it rose, dude. It's not. It's the same. The anyway. they'll get they'll get photos of of a, after a storm, and they'll be like, "This is how high the waters c- right. can and do get." It's like, yeah. come on, people. So yeah, that whole thing. For those of you that don't live on the coast and don't grasp it, like. There's things called erosion and there's things called sand yeah. wars. Like Dubai needs to go like still steal sand from like huh. islands and stuff. And there's documentaries on sand wars. Oh, to build the fake islands and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But there's no actual like islands that are like losing their ground to global warming. Right. That's right. not 
actually happening. Exactly. <laughs> Never has the sea level risen like an inch. Manhattan's not underwater like Al Gore said they would be. But Ding! What, like, what happens, the light what of truth is, that is not it, actually happening. Ding, like, but it's oh, mind control God. because <laughs> when you put people in a space of trauma, you can trauma-based mind control, you can tell them anything you, you want. And it'll go back in their subconscious mind. And they don't, they're not going to go and knock on your door 10 years later and be like, we lied to you so you would pay a carbon tax, you know, right. so we could put a smart meter on your home so that we could do this and do this and do that and do this. No, they lie to get their way. And then they don't tell you later on that they lie. They just keep lying. So anyways, there was this plan in 2018 with Bill Gates and David W. Keith to dim the sun over Tucson, Arizona. Right. And they were going to go up in this balloon and do this whole experiment using aluminum. He was like, like we've come to the right. Yeah, just like Mr. Burns. We've come to the conclusion, and just like in The Matrix, which is probably right. a form of, you know, because yeah. when I go to people with activism, they're always like, oh, like Mr. Burns, ha ha, or like, oh, like The Matrix. Right. And they've already got, so mental pathways are very Predictive interesting. Yeah. Right. Right. Everyone's, all of us are like, ah! we chime in, right, right, right. Yeah, it's very real. The mental pathways, like when they get to you first on a topic, it's like, if you're five years old and you've never heard the word car and sh someone shows you a red Volkswagen and they're like, this is car, this is car, this is car, this is car. Yeah. Now your mental pathway is like, that's what a car looks like, right. you know? Then maybe you don't see a car for like five years, let's just say, it's a horrible metaphor. But then next time, if someone says, what's a car look like? That's just gonna be your mental pathway. Later on, someone shows you a, a blue Toyota pickup, you're, it's, you're always right. gonna think about that red. It's just because of the right. mental pathway, the way that it was dug, the way that how are That's impressionable right. our minds are it's like when you first to get someone on a topic like space which i don't necessarily think is what the official narrative is necessarily true but but the propaganda the science fiction and all that sort of stuff they get us in our head certain things and images and now you can't be disproven right. so anyways the idea of like we're all doomed from global warming and we need to dim the sun it's like and then they give it a fancy word geoengineering they got to everybody first like right. frankenskies I'm very proud of it being seen by probably like 15 million people by now. I've been plugging away every freaking day. I gave away like 20 DVDs online today. So Frank is guys, the movie, check it out. It's really impactful, you know, but they got to everybody first with this like concept of contrails or contrails, chemtrails or conspiracy. Geoengineering is good. And it's going to save us from the evils that is global warming. And, and not to mention They'll say all day long, like carbon is the devil and it's your fault because you drive cars, you drive your car, you carbon, 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 you bad carbon. But they won't go as far to say we exhale it every second, but we do, right. you know? So that's like right. the real guilt trip. It's, it's all our fault, you know? Right. So we should right. be enslaved into this technocracy and smart cities and all this stuff because, right. you know, it's our own evil doing. And we should so accept we to be managed by the government. Be governed. Right. Because we deserve so, to die, right? So a little tidbit of my life in 2018, I went and I hosted this conference, Stop Geoengineering Conference in Tucson. And um, I was lucky enough to rally some people together. Um, we packed this conference hall. I was blown away that I was actually able to do it. I was able to go on this like coast to coast show leading up to it. And all these people heard like, oh, that's something to do. Let's go try to stop Bill Gates from dimming the sun. And we had this whole conference in a protest for Mother Earth on Mother's Day and a concert. And this whole shebang, I got arrested. Like, so Bill Gates, so here's the deal. David Keith and, and under the, you know, funding of Bill Gates, they sent this, this like goon boogeyman to my conference. I know it was them. And this dude like tried to like rough up my whole thing. And like, it was such a scare scene. people, intimidation. He was screaming while I was doing my speech. He was screaming, he's a global shill. He's a global shill. He's a global shill. And then like, he like went and leave and he got all up in my face. And like, I, I smacked this cup out of his hand. He's waving this cup in my hand. But I think what the, the goal was, was to like get an altercation. Cause I was, I was out of my mind. I think there might've even been some little frequency thing going on with me, but either way I got arrested for assault for smacking the cup and the whole conference sure. got all, got all crazy and stuff. But we did end up preventing the, the Bill Gates experiment from happening. It was like the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. So Fantastic. it was amazing. It was an amazing thing. Um, that the public was able to do. Like the whole of Tucson didn't really know necessarily that chemtrails were real, but they did know that Bill Gates was trying to spray aluminum over the city and that they weren't having it. So that, that kind of got the kibosh got put on that. And now like Greta is 
saying we need to do it in Sweden and now they like might do it in Sweden. But what I've noticed that they keep doing with the geoengineering and the supposed like events that they're going to try to pull off is they know if they have some sort of event, then there can be a protest. Right. Right. So instead they like have like these news news articles that one just came out that said like Mexico says, please stop geoengineering. And so like they have these little small victories so that the activism is kind of like quelled. But really, we need to rally together as humans and be like, please don't. I mean, not please. Stop fucking blocking our sons, you pieces of shit. Or we're going to like pitchfork your asses. You know what I mean? It's like, this is not cool. If you lived where I live, where I'm probably everybody like this, like they don't even go to the airports. They're going somewhere else to some covert thing. They're going, they're flying really low to the ground. There's all sorts of stuff being sprayed and mixed together all the time and being zapped and all this stuff. And And then I'm almost done. But you ask, like, what are they doing? Are they leading up to some sort of trigger event or whatever? I mean, like, what's the main end goal? Right, please. And how does it relate to the jabs and all this stuff? Right. Well, what's up with these purple lights? Okay, because I all of a sudden have Dude? two purple str- hmm? Oh, yeah, okay, James, so James oh, is looking into God. this. Yeah. So, so I got a couple purple street lamps in my town, up. and I started Holy really wigging out about it because I'm a truther, you know? Let's not even right. call us sort of conspiracy theorists anymore because that's, come on, like, look at the world we in. There's got athletes dropping right. dead like flies and all this stuff. We're, we're no longer right. conspiracy theorists. We're truthers, okay? Like, for real. And in my town, these purple street lamps, they are weird and creepy. And the one that popped up, the first one, it was accompanied with like all these cameras. And so huh. either either it's activating something in the it's jab. It's a test. It's a test. Or it's, or it's like got AI cameras that's, that are watching it. And then the, the loose phrase is in the people. And then they'll glow under the AI cameras or something. I don't know. I think one of yes. the boosters might have something that is activated by that spectrum under that light. Yes. So then they can just do it in certain places and, and then test it. And mm. see, like, oh, this many people um, got this new variant or whatever. But what is up? What do you guys got on the purple lights? I'm done with that. T- yeah, James, did you have a? Uh, what were you oh. thinking about this purple light? Thing? Oh, dude, they they're they're come they're popping up everywhere. They're all over the place. Right. Like, this is so crazy that you brought this up tonight because I was gonna ask you because I I was gonna ask you after the show like do you have any information about this? Um, <clears throat> Back in 2016, I'm trying to find it right now, but the, there was a there was an article written in some weird uh, uh, some weird um, online magazine about blue lights being used all over the like all over the globe. Um, but this this article was out of a online magazine. The dude uh, centered around like Glasgow, Scotland. Right. And that these blue lights, the, the, the crime rates went down. Okay. So that's the huh. thing. They, they put the blue lights in and then the crime weight, crime rates went down. Then, then even in Japan, they put blue lights in the subways and suicide rate in uh, the subways went down because that was a, a big thing in those countries out there about, about the, uh, the suicides in the subways. So they put the blue lights really down. There and, go ahead. Those blue lights, um, one reason why they impact crime rate is because junkies can't hit a vein under the blue light because you, huh. you can't see your veins. So they put, wow. those, they put those in um, areas where people are trying to shoot up stuff. Just saying. That's interesting. That's kind of like oh. how they, they put spikes on, uh, on the floor underneath where it's dry so that people can't like, lay down and be comfortable. They do the same thing to birds. You know, over every like sign, like a target or whatever, it has spikes where birds can't build a nest. It's like, like we're pests. This this subject of talking about how it impacts our health is is really big deal to me because when I first started researching the chemtrail and geoengineering thing, like the time period when I was describing with you know listening to Freeman TV, and um, you know I was working at 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 the courthouse, which was this old building, and I'm. I was going through some physical problems during that period of time. I was getting these real intense headaches every week. And, um, and not long after that, I went through this period of time where I was having these, what I thought were allergy problems. And I've, I did some interesting research and I would challenge anyone look up allergy symptoms and then look up heavy metal symptoms. And you're going to notice some pretty interesting parallels. And um, what I discovered was at the time, the woman, um, my ex-wife was a nurse, still is, and she was, you know, urging me to go the traditional route, right? Like Western medicine. 
And so I went and saw a specialist for allergies. And I'll tell you what, allergy is one of the most whacked witch doctor esque <laughs> kind of aspects of our Western medicine. They have no idea what they're doing. They shot my back with, um, they filled my whole back with all these, I think, 32 different things they plugged me with up and down my arm. And they said, oh, you have no allergies, right? And I'm like, well, what am I reacting to? Right. You know, and so, uh, you know, long story short, obviously, from my perspective, I think that, you know, this combination of electric signals in the air, this full spectrum dominance, getting metals into our body has, um, like I was describing, like an autoimmune reaction. Your body's trying to deal with this thing that doesn't make sense and right. it's trying to work it out. Right. And it, um, I don't know, personally, what I discovered was. I think that that it is having a health impact and that people, you know, this is a way we can help help people realize like, you know, um, things like cilantro, right, are supposed to be really good at removing heavy, heavy metals. Um, Freeman was talking about bentonite clay. If you're having um, problems, physical problems, l like try reapproaching this problem and, and, and look at it like heavy metal um, problems right. and see if you don't find those solutions helping. If it does, right. then that should raise some questions as to what's really making people sick here. Right. You know, uh, I, I kind of, uh, I could, we could learn more about that. We could skip, uh, Kristen Megan. Um, she was a whistleblower and she worked for the military and she saw these chemicals and these yeah. barium and strontium mm -hmm. and aluminum. And, uh, she thought it was for, Anybody can find these these clips on the on YouTube or anywhere else. Her name is Kristen Megan. Uh, so I just wanted to play some of that Russell Blaylock. This is a uh, radio. Russell Blaylock is a doctor, and he talks about uh, the heavy metals, what it does to us health wise. Uh, and so I uh, uh, looked at the literature and some of the reports and YouTube videos, and they were saying uh, that they were dropping uh, one of the ingredients was aluminum. Well, I had uh, done a fair amount of uh, writing and research uh, on the effect of aerosolized uh, chemicals in the, in the nose when you breathe them. And uh, what we knew was that these particles tend to travel along the uh, olfactory nerves, which are the smell nerves in the nose, and it travels directly to the part of the brain that has to do with memory and, and uh, emotions. Uh, the hippocampus, the entorhinal area, and the prefrontal cortex, and that you can trace these chemicals traveling along that nerve and depositing in this area of the brain. The other thing that was known is that if you aerosolize aluminum, uh, it's one of the metals that passes very easily along this track and directly into the brain. So it bypasses the blood-brain barrier and goes directly into the brain and accumulates. Well, if you do it in animals, it produces lesions or damage in that uh, area of the brain, and the animal uh, will begin to show changes of memory and learning and emotional changes. Uh, when we look at people who have Alzheimer's disease, ironically, the highest concentration of aluminum in the brain is uh, that same entry point, uh, what's called the entorhinal cortex, uh, and the levels uh, continue to accumulate. Uh, so we have compelling evidence that aerosolized aluminum alone uh, will enter the brain and produce damage to that critical area of the brain. Uh, the worst of all is the nano size. Now, nano size means you make it such a small particle uh, that it easily penetrates skin, it penetrates barriers in the body that normally metals cannot pass through. Uh, when you nanosize and produce these incredibly small particulate matter, it passes very easily. Uh, so when you nanosize aluminum and you uh, use it in the, these aerosols through the nasal passages, uh, it enters the brain in very high concentrations. And they find that the nanosize aluminum in the brain is infinitely more toxic. Now, one of the toxic uh, reactions to aluminum is intense inflammation. Uh, and activation of cells in the brain that are the immune cells called microglia. Uh, aluminum is a very potent activator of these uh, immune cells, and that triggers the release of uh, a powerful substance called glutamate, 
which is an excitotoxin that causes uh, cells to die from an excitatory mechanism, kind of complex mechanism, but it it uh, is a They load our food with this stuff for glutamate. Yeah. Right. And I coined the term in the medical literature <clears throat> called immunoexcitotoxicity to describe that process. So we know that occurs. We know it occurs very easily. Now, the reports are coming out now that what they're spraying is nano-sized aluminum, and the idea is the, the old uh, concept of preventing global warming. And they nano-size the aluminum so it'll stay in the upper atmosphere longer, supposedly as a reflective uh, uh, compound, uh, a metal. Uh, the problem with that, even from a climatologic uh, description, is that if you make it into cirrus like clouds rather than reflecting it upward and out of the atmosphere, it reflects the heat downward and actually causes global warming. So they... Uh, you know, you could envision that they're doing its own purpose to make the atmosphere heat up so they can see, see the atmosphere is warming up. But uh, what I'm concerned about mainly is the medical effect, and that's because of the very strong connection between aluminum passing through this pathway into the brain uh, is so strongly connected with Alzheimer's disease uh, and other diseases of memory. Uh, if you're aerosolizing this and uh, spraying literally tons of it over the world uh, and people are constantly breathing that uh, aerosolized nano-sized aluminum, which will easily penetrate uh, filters in your uh, air conditioning system, uh, enter your home. So you're breathing it 24 hours a day, uh, producing high levels of aluminum. Uh, in this part of the brain, and uh, the consequences could be absolutely devastating. It could cause a huge increase in uh, Alzheimer's disease and uh, inflammatory neurological disorders. Uh, now, I watched uh, YouTube, which was a geoengineering conference that the government had uh, put on. And in the conference, uh, one of the questions somebody in the audience asked, well, what is the medical effect of spraying aluminum in the atmosphere? And the speaker said, well, uh, we don't really know, uh, but we're in the process of researching that. Well, of course, that was an absolute lie. We do know what it does. Right. But uh, the fact that uh, they, they were admitting that, in uh, fact, they were going to spray, uh, they gave it in the, in the future tense, that they were going to spray aluminum. Uh, the evidence now from um, the uh, examination by a biologist and, and uh uh, scientists around the world is that the aluminum level in the lakes and streams and trees and, uh, is increasing enormously. Uh, some areas have uh, incredible elevations of aluminum in the, in the groundwater uh, and in the, the vegetation. So uh, if this indeed is happening, uh, we're looking at a, a medical catastrophe uh, that's worldwide. My statement was that it's criminal and whoever's doing this should uh, be um, charged with the criminal uh, act. Uh, right. that this could kill uh, thousands, if not millions, of people eventually. I mean, if you, you're inducing Alzheimer's uh, disease on a worldwide scale and you're inducing a number of diseases just from breathing it, I mean, within the lungs, you can produce asthma, you can produce chronic lung disease. People who have pre existing chronic lung disease will precipitously get worse. Because aluminum, as it enters the, the epithelium of the lungs, uh, is going to produce intense inflammatory reactions. And that's going to produce a worsening of their pulmonary conditions. Also, the, the uh, aluminum is absorbed into the bloodstream, uh, can be deposited in the heart. People with heart failure would get worse. Uh, people with hypertension would get worse. Uh, numerous diseases could be uh, precipitated and worsened. Uh, by such uh, an insane policy, but it is criminal. It's a criminal act. Yeah, no doubt. No one was asked permission to do this. This was not announced publicly. This was not uh, entered into a public forum, uh, so <clears throat> these health uh, issues could be discussed. Uh, they just secretly uh, have done it on a worldwide uh, scale of, of, uh, of an enormous proportion, dropping uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of tons of this uh, this product in the atmosphere. 
Exactly. The thing and about it, it's irreversible. Once it enters the streams and the waters and the plants, uh, there's no way to remove it. Uh, you, you know, you've destroyed uh, massive amounts of uh, the environment. So what we have here, we have aluminum toxicity that is literally killing trees out west is going to be, you know, we're seeing fish kale, uh, fish kills everywhere recently across the planet. I've got a list of, of fish kills that are day by day for the last like three months and every day there's a huge fish kill and I think it has a lot to do with this which makes me wonder doctor uh, I think this is intentional but not yeah. on the not on the uh, side of they think they're they want to change the environment I think this is intentional to um, you know get the population down right. well it's a very cruel way to do it uh, the other thing is that the huge number of birds that are dying mm -hmm. we have millions of birds uh, all in, in uh, clusters that are dying with no explanation uh, now birds die every so often in clusters that's that's known throughout history but the scale of it today is just uh, unbelievable but you know their intent their intention whether this is like even even uh, sorry, I have to pause it or else it's up. Go even ahead. that, like, has anyone else even noticed the? I, I mean, I'm I live in New Hampshire. I've I've grown up in New England my entire life, and I remember as a kid there were a lot of there. There was a lot more insects around than right. there are now. You'd be yeah. picking like, them I, out of your eyes and your ears and your nose and gnats, and right. you'd have to hold your hands high to get the gnats above your head and stuff. Right. Yeah. And nowadays there's really not, there's really not a lot of that going on. Not and I'm, I, you know, I've been driving now for almost two decades of my life. And I remember when back in the, when I first started driving a car down the highway that I, you know, I'd have to wipe the, you know, the insects off of there, the bug juice. Yeah. You know? Off and the now, headlights and off your yeah. shield. And yeah. The, the, you know, motorcyclists to get them in their teeth, you know, and, that's yeah. uh, not so much. I agree. Nah, not so much. Yeah. Not so much. But um, yeah, we're almost coming up on three hours here, Sean. You, I know. I don't mind extending it uh, if you guys don't mind uh, going a little longer. But I know that we're going to be cut off on the One Great Work Network at three or three hours. Um, so I don't know if they want to extend it. But um, if if we need to uh, uh, promote your everybody's work before the network is done broadcasting we can continue on with twitch and on your website james free your mind ne.com where people can continue watching the stream uh via your twitch emb embed on yeah. your site free your mind ne.com yep go over to the live page it's over there okay and uh uh, we want to encourage people to watch Frankenskies and to visit actualactivists.com. Uh, Matt, would you like to uh, discuss or tell people about what you're working on or uh, what you got uh, going or you know, promote yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah, always, uh, always work in progress. Activism is a lifestyle. I encourage everyone to be an activist, even though sometimes it sounds like a you know, whatever it is, once you start to take that first step every day is a new journey, new beginning, all these sort of things. Um, I'm working on a sequel, Frank and Skies 2, Climate Chains. And this this will be taking me to London, which is very exciting, to protest and document the 15-minute uh, smart cities or 15-minute cities that they're coming up with. Right. The 15-minute cities combat I think they were global warming, of course, you know, by telling you you can't go far and all this sort right. of Right. Kind of Portland, Oregon was kind of built that way around the train. They would have these little pockets around the train where people would go and everybody had a bicycle, you know, and that was like, um, and I think it's um, Oxford is the city <laughs> or whatever in in England that they're starting it. And that's like where, or was it, was it the other, where the other school is? It's Oxford it's, and Ipswich. There's Oxford. two of them. Yeah, there's oh, two right. There's two Ipswich. cities now. Ipswich. <laughs> right. Ipswich in Massachusetts, we used to, I used to live there. And like, that's where they landed right after the, you know, they, they used to be called Agawam. Yeah. But anyway, uh, 
that's it figures that's like the landing that's the front of the spear is zip switch mm, that's yeah. yeah that makes sense and it's funny also that like the first dude to get jabbed is named william shakespeare <laughs> okay i mean the guy telling us on the news was laughing his face off it was, mm. so i mean it's obviously just this so of course they chose like oxford where the where um you know that's where their school is where they're you know the the think tanks and the round table groups and all, all that like it makes sense that they're using that as the first city please i don't yes. mean to interrupt you no please um i could i could go on so um i'm excited about that and frankenskies2.com and that'll all be evolving um just like how uh frankenskies the first movie um just as it was coming out geoengineering was be was becoming normalized and launched as no longer a conspiracy but actual as mainstream narrative solution right to, to you know that was like a whole thing for the Kim Trail right. conspiracies it was like our heyday even though we thought everyone's going to be like oh you were right and and still even though the examples of geoengineering were chemtrails they were like no 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 you're still crazy and we didn't get our our validation which is yeah. anyways so there's the, all that and please yeah please check out actualactivists.com and I have an EMF silver clothing line to and that's a whole another story um sparrow s p e r o gear sparrow gear on instagram sparrowgear.com and to finish the thought on the street lamps people are commenting in the chat nobody Thank really you. knows exactly they um the official narrative at first was don't worry it's a manufacturer's defect just call us up and let us know where they are and we'll come and replace them well people called them up and let them know where they were for years and they didn't, and not one ever got replaced. They just kept putting them in, being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let us know where they are. Kind of like the chemtrails. Like, oh, what, what, the gaslighting? You're like, no, that we're not spraying anything on you. Like, right. even though the chemtrails are getting more and lower and more and lower, and nothing's going on here. Or any of it, you know, the jab or the fluoride in the water. No, it's, oh, good, right. for your, it's good for your teeth. Just keep right. drinking it. Just Flu drink it. Fluoride, fluoride causes fluorosis, makes your teeth rot and fall out. It's like actually horrible for your teeth it's really that should awful. be another black pill episode yeah, it's we a hazardous waste yeah, yeah it's a hazardous. Yeah. so for it's like real. everything that they do and they're like no 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 yeah 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 so the the purple lights we don't really know exactly but they're they are very suspect and it's right on the edge of the color light spectrum roy g bib of what we, of what we can see right. so violet is a right, right on that edge of what we can see and maybe there's hidden lights or hidden stuff in it or it's activating something, or someone's gonna glow, or maybe it'll we'll all just have a QR code that's like a black light stamp on our hands, and it'll be the black lights will have to be everywhere to have that all integrated. Who knows? But it's very weird and suspicious. And anytime they anything happens nowadays, I'm I'm curious, you yeah. know, to say the least. And I appreciate meeting you all, and thanks, Sean. And I'll pass it on after that. That's great. And uh, thank you for being here. And we very much appreciate it. And uh, it's it's so great to have the uh, creator of what I do consider the best uh, film on chemtrails. And it's got it's so information packed and it really gets people going. And I'm so glad that you could join us today. Um, and if you would, please continue to stay with us for a little while longer. I wanted to um, what exactly uh, is the topic per se for Frankenskies 2? Is that, uh, can you tell us? Is that because you're going to bring us more information into further un understanding? I mean, the, the top of the topic is um, more awareness surrounding the narrative of chemtrails, that contrails aren't even real, and also like bucking the system. Like we're going to say, we're going to say F you to the man regarding climate change lockdowns. So the game is to do this bait and switch and get everyone familiar with lockdowns, which is like a prison term. And then right. all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden be like, Oh, the climate right, right, Lock, right. lockdown again. Cause you're smart metered and everything, even you though sure that you're inside your house all day and all that nonsense, you know, and even so that, though Klaus Schwab wrote in the book he, in the Great Reset that, oh, uh, even though we were locked down, it didn't really affect the climate. So we got to do it harder, he said. Okay, right, right. right. That, was his down, harder, that was his answer to that question is wow. we must do it harder to show that it works. Wow. So, I can't lock down no. anymore. I'm already locked down. <laughs> I know. It locked down further. Let me put a boot on your neck. Right. I can't oh. lock down. <laughs> <laughs>
Man. Little super troopers there. Hey, Matt, I, <laughs> that was good. you know, I wanted to thank you, man. I, your work is just fantastic. Oh. And I, I'm honored to be here with you, another hero in the midst. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to contacting you and being, um, I can help promote your, your work and your future work. And um, I think it's so inspirational that you've done so much and to teach people responsibility. When we come to realize these things, we have to have that curiosity and keep looking and wondering, yeah, why are those lights a different color? You know, and ask these questions and keep other people asking these questions because it's so easy for people to just kind of start glossing over this stuff because it's it's like the Goebbels, Hitler, big lie thing. This lie is so big and so colossal nice. that people don't know how to, they can't get a handle on it. They can't get a, a hold on it. It's just too too big and but people like matt that stick their neck out you know and create an event in arizona or create a documentary they give people something to grab onto they give some handles and something to hold on something to look into you know look well what is going on with these lights you know and what that brought to my mind with the lights is um like the blue light problem we have a lot of us already know about this these blue lights mess with our circadian rhythm and um, it's not natural. The flicker's not right. You know, um, our bodies are used to fire, you know, right. and all this new technology, we're just getting used to it. And biologically, right. we're not ready for a lot of these things. We're not used to a little metal floating in the air that's so small that you can't see it. And our, our bodies are trying to learn to work through all this stuff. So um, thanks for helping us um, sort this mess out, Matt. And I'm really glad to meet you. And I'm excited to see Frank and guys, too. Hey, the honor is mine, and I look forward to further engagements with you, and and Sean and and um, James. And um, when you were speaking, I got this like little download about the purple lights and p people and humanity and everything. It's like if people don't have the answer to something, then they can't like they can't create like a mental construct about it. And they're like, "Well, tell me what the purple lights really are, then." And I'm like, well, it could be this, could be this, could be this. And like, oh, well, oh, well, then you don't know. It's like, you, it's like, well, you have to keep that open mind. You don't, you're, but the mind wants to make it concrete and be like, no, A to Z, like build. You that. nailed it. Yeah. Every time people, I get into it with people with the geoengineering chemtrail, they always say, oh, oh, why would they do that? Or who is it? And if you can't right away answer that question, they're like, oh, well, see, you don't know, you know, and that's just an easy way to, get past the problem of thinking about it and wondering about it because it's a difficult topic. But if they can just mm -hmm. pin you down on a question that you can't answer in one sentence, Oh, you know, I don't need to think about that. You don't, you don't know who's doing it. You don't know why they're doing it. And they always ask the same question. Everybody does. They do. They say, I do. Oh, why would yeah. they do that? You know, right. yeah. who why, will build why the would they do that to themselves? Who right. will build the roads Thanks. guys? Come on. Like, <laughs> yeah. We've had those arguments. Yeah. You know, so. being creative and curious is our gift as humans. That's and, right. and the gift of life is this generating ability to, that's our divine connection, our ability to think and figure things out and wonder. And it's also our responsibility to do that because we've been given the latest technology of the universe. You know, how valuable is that? Our body is the most modern version of realities. Um, product, you know, this amazing thing. And they want to, they want to own that and take right. over it and turn it into something that they can predict and control. And it's up to us to not let that happen. <laughs> you have the truth frequency, Chris, and people need to visit your website as well. And evil dot life. And yeah, they maybe. can also find you on the one great work network. You're there amongst the creators with James and myself. And, yeah, and also uh, I would encourage people to go to chrisjansen.com because please, I'm building yes. a network of people that care about these things and we're starting to create communications and teams and mastermind groups. And so I have an email list started there and that's a way to get involved, get part of my telegram chat and um, other people pretty soon you'll be on here talking with Matt Landman and <laughs> Freeman fly and know people like Mark Passio. To me, these are heroes I want to meet. These are the people I want to be in communication with. And this is what I want to spend my time doing because it gives you fulfillment because you're not part of the problem. You're part of the solution. God bless you, man. And you're, you're adding to the frequency. It's a chorus. We're all like, we're all speaking the same truth and we're, you know, we have heart. We want to heal this, the other people, you know, they're, it's sad to see them in this mind control and, the, and, you know, to be totally lost, like they're, um, 
and we you know they're all you, you guys are all actual activists we're actually doing something and i'm i'm honored to to like to be able to in to have you here with freeman and matt and where you guys can make these connections and it'll you know it'll flourish it'll turn into blossom into new things like uh our first episode of black pill um had uh these people are creating new works together and they found, you know, they've, they found like-minded people that are also resonating the same truth frequency. And I hope that happens with every episode. I hope all of you guys talk to each other and, and keep spreading this signal. And, uh, you know, you're, you're all doing the great work. It's a beautiful thing. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. I feel oh. like you guys are like my brothers from another mother's, you know, out That's there great. on the East coast. Appreciate That's it. Great. So we're we're gonna lose the stream on half of it, but we're still broadcasting, and it's still gonna be recorded. So uh, those of you that are watching, I'll that. That. because I, I I'll uh, I'll get in touch with Aaron. Aaron oh you right, know. you're gonna make it keep going. Okay, it we, might. We be can see about that. We can okay. see. Okay, all right. Well, it's on the line. We're 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 trying to make it happen, but it's still it's still gonna be recorded, and we still have more to say. I wanted to also look at the health. Uh, I had to, you got to mention Mark Ellens because uh, that is related, and we had to bring it up on this show. And uh, Matt, if you'd like to stay with us, I know you're on the West Coast, so it's much earlier for you. If you, you know, if you need to take a break during this, uh, if you need to use the bathroom or whatever while we're playing this clip, I just wanted to get it shifted into this other piece of the conversation. We had we looked at the heavy metals a little bit. We talked about that, and. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the other things that might be happening. Or, or there's evidence that's happening. and uh, Expand the conversation a little bit into that. Yeah, Would you care good. to what, what you got? The self-replicating carbon fiber nanotubes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, telemorphosis or whatever this thing that is, that video. Let's do right. it. I don't need okay. to take I'm not sure. Okay, great. Wonderful. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the clip that you were thinking of. But uh, it uh, it kind of it's like uh, there's some radio program like explaining what it is, what Morgellons is and how it's related to what we were talking about today. So I just wanted to put that there so then we can discuss uh, so we don't have to explain it all ourselves. We can just let this video play. Uh, James, did you find the right one? Go ahead, Matt. What were you going to say? What, what are, are the symptoms, symptoms and what, what, what from your view, from your study? Were you going to say something, Matt? Go ahead and speak. Oh, yeah, I was going to say something to completely. Well, it's chem, still chemtrail related, but yeah. um, we can, I mean, we can get into it more. I I, I think that they um, block astrological stuff from us as well. But we can get into that after this this um, Morgellons thing. Right, because it's making a barrier to the, to the, the stars as well, like as well as the sun, because it's all emitting energy, right? Yeah, they think they can throw up uh, aluminum and then zap it with frequency and prevent right. us from getting like certain like downloads, like all of the stuff from the stars and the sun and the moon and everything. Right. Even if the moon, I don't know if it's good or bad or whatever, but all of the light that we get is like an orchestra. It's like a whole symphony of of like a whole orchestra, like um, right. al like a album, like a song. Let's just say yes. a song. And right when the song is like this whole long song right when it's coming together and the um, it's all uh, uh, what do you call it? The epiphany. I, don't know, I, I can't think right now. Crescendo. Crescendo. Yeah. Right when all that's coming together, they're blocking it with a bunch of aluminum and zapping it with frequency thinking they can right. like, dis disrupt God's plan. But in the end, they can't really disrupt God's plan. They're just trying really hard. So that's going on. And then the Morgellons is something internal where they're trying to also disrupt our like evolution. I don't know if yeah. it's let's watch the video. Yeah, I think it's um okay. Could be in the the spray and the in the chemtrails because they do all sorts of weird stuff with that. And there's different um, people have researched that. Also, I think it right. could be. I think more gallons could be part of the, the GMO food aspect too. Yes. Uh, they're, they're one of the people in this video uh, actually brings it up. So uh, it is kind of a, it's, it's a piece of a larger puzzle where all these things fit to make this, to make this creation. 
what are the symptoms and what, from your view, from your studies, what exactly is Morgellons disease? Um, my uh, view of Morgellons is basically the result of industrialization. Be the list of symptoms is extremely long. It's almost similar to like a fungal, inf a fungal overload, pathogenic overload. And there's so many related uh, symptoms. Uh, the key, some of the more prominent ones being the body actually growing these fibrils or hairs, uh, the body producing artifacts of some kind, uh, that whether they're uh, some people, I've even met a couple of people that are producing plant-like material growing out of their skin. Um, there's actually these uh, non-earthling type of insects being uh, come out of their body. I mean, unbelievable stories that I would never have believed it unless I was standing in their in, in their house witnessing this. Uh, hexagons. I mean, on our website, uh, Margellans Research Group dot com, there's probably a thousand pictures that you you can see. The, the, they're they're just they're real. It's unbelievable. It's like the science fiction channel um, come to life. Absolutely, I agree with you. You know as well many components to this now why do you think uh well why, why do you think that this is such a big cover-up i mean the uh, the morgellons was reported 20 some odd years ago um according to doc, uh, dr caroline carter she says it shouldn't even be called morgellons disease it should be called gmod which would stand for genetically modified organism disease what do you have to say about that i am totally aligned with that you are well, genetically modified she is testing gene therapy with, via hair samples she's testing in the country of cyprus eight out of ten people and doesn't matter the age group by the way little children all the way up to the elderly eight out of ten are testing positive for morgellons disease what's going on uh what's going on <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question because um actually there's a lot of patented uh, data um, and that I, I have found and people uh, uh, like to share when they find uh, un or declassified information that used to be classified. I, I have a uh, report from 2004 that talked about the nano and micro technologies of um, unmanned, basically smart dust, which are microscop smaller than microscopical particles that some of the components of that smart dust are showing up in people's body coming out through these little black specks and showing up in some of the fibers and so you tell me what's going on i think it's madness but the body is responding by trying to push the stuff out through the skin or whatever and it's affecting our genetic expression it's affecting people's health and it's horrifying especially when you horrifying. have horrifying Horrifying. But silver iodide and dry ice nuclei are Stone Age technologies compared to today's higher tech particle payloads. The most amazing of these belong to a family of weather mod devices that are so small you might not see one, even if it was floating in your eye. Ranging from the ultra tiny to the nearly invisible, these are the revolutionary micro machines that will be the workhorses of any world weather control system. They're MEMS, Micro Electromechanical Sensors. The thing I really want people to hear, and I didn't have scientific validation until recently, that what I believe to be true uh, is in fact true. And that is, Morgellons is not a disease. That is the great red herring that they've asked us all to swallow, that there's this disease out there, and there's a segment of the population uh, involved but that most everybody else is good to go. And that's certainly not true. And when I wrote my paper for Arizona Skywatch in 09, I tried to get that point across by calling it a syndrome. And the reason I say that it's not a disease, that's not to mean that people aren't suffering. And that's not to mean that these things aren't happening. Of course they are. But the reason I say it's not a disease, because we think of a disease as a pathogen that gets into us, measles, mumps, whatever, a single pathogen that is classified as a disease with a certain amount of symptomology to it, and that's that. And that's not what we're seeing here at all. We're seeing 
multiple materials in the human body that work symbiotically together, synergistically, that are being delivered to us through the air supply. Um, and when the body recognizes, and it's strong enough, mind, body, and spirit, to say this doesn't belong, it begins to try to push it out. Now that's all these fibers. Like what James was saying. Forms, right. Which is a really better, much more accurate description than fiber. These heavy metals, these crystalline polymers, this fungus, all of these things that work together, they don't belong in our bodies. And the bodies have the wisdom and the strength, and may I say the spirit, to shove it out. Very painful, very unsightful, unsightly, very difficult process. And so my goal, once I sort of clicked on to, that's what was happening, of course, with the help of many, brilliant. I'm just a dot connector, really. Um, but I work with, I call the above ground underground, a lot of very brilliant minds in the scientific, in the, in the research community, uh, microbiologists, hematologists, you know, all these wonderful people um, who share with me what they know and understand, physicists and all, all kinds of folks. So when I began to see that there was a match between what was coming out of these sores and what was being delivered through the air, and then I have a research doctor who has access to an atomic microscope who was able to observe live blood, you know, on a very, 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 very small scale and could see that this fungus was actually collecting these toxic metals, which we know, aluminum, barium, and the whole nine yards that are being delivered to us as well, uh, and using them as weapons against our immune system. Fake bells went off for me, and I began to realize that this was a very hate to give it over, brilliant system that was being laid into our body uh, piecemeal. And I'm not sure where it all started. I don't believe it just started with the chemtrails. I believe you can follow it all the way back to some inoculations post-World War II and a lot of other things, food. Um, but be that as it may, it's not a disease, guys. Hey, that, that's great. Um too. Is there a connection between Morgellons disease and chemtrails? Dr. Will Spencer, I'll let you, you take that one. I would say there is because the, uh, the com uh, some of the components that we're finding, the artifacts coming out of people's bodies, are being detected in the air. So, um, and the, uh, at pretty high altitudes, actually. And so that would lead me to believe there is a connection as well as not only the components, uh, the, the fibers and the, so, and the metals that are coming out of people's bodies are in people's bodies, uh, but also the, uh, these uh, exotic or new lab-created microorganisms, uh, genetically altered ones, are showing up in people's bodies as well as in the atmosphere. So, uh, you know, it would only believe, lead me to believe that there is a direct connection. Right. So here comes the conspiracy theory. If, uh, if, if, if Morgellons or Morgellons is related to chemtrails and it's coming out of a spray from air flights, is there some grand plan to uh, uh, get this stuff into human beings? Well, it, I don't know if it was the plan or anything, but I will say that uh, all of us have been exposed, all animals, all life forms on this planet. Uh, it's just a matter of what our genetic makeup is, what we have been chemically poisoned with uh, as an industry, meaning working in industry versus uh, living in certain polluted areas that is allowing this to manifest more rapidly in individual It's a recent turn of events, but yeah. I guess that's to be expected. Not a surprise, uh, unfortunately. I have a, a, a segment on my website that if people want to look at later it's called bad hair day and they'll see what the hairs look like they'll see the hair fo the hair follicle of the hair the hair bulb with blue fibers growing out of, of the bulb after i pull the hair out can you tell which hair to pull out uh, yeah because usually those hairs are thicker and i can see that there's a goo coating on them they it, the goo coating comes above the skin line and so i can see it and it makes the hair look thicker because it's do, coated do you do you get the goo coating on, on your skin too, or is it just something on the hair? Does it, do, in other words, would you get a, a gooey portion, well, not gooey, but yeah. slimy? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do to some extent, but not as much as the hair. Uh -huh. There must be uh -huh. something in the, the actual hair follicle 
and I have pictures of it. That is there's chemicals interest. that go there, plus yeah. each hair follicle has its own capillary. Mm -hmm. So um, there's really something sure. about that that is very attractive. Go ahead, Cliff. Yeah, absolutely. This relationship, Jeff, with hair is, as I said before, one of the keys to understanding this, this particular um, creation, if you will. If it's an antenna, no wonder it would connect to hair follicles, you know, like, and like that. Never mind. I'll, we'll just keep playing here. I think we go on the record as saying that, that what you can find in those hair follicles will, will set you back on your heels. And then almost all Morgans will, will relate more or less to the same thing. You will find in and around those hairs and within those hairs all kinds of Morgellons manifestations. Wow. In some cases, in some cases the hair bulb and the hair root is so extended mm -hmm. and so covered with a white uh, sebum sheath mm -hmm. that it's five to six, maybe even seven times its normal size. And, it, and when you pull it out, it comes out without you know, the nerves are dead you don't feel anything jen uh, these pictures are they're they're st stunning staggering they're so different uh, each and every one of them has something to say so to speak in terms of an expression of something foreign and yeah. weird uh, that should not be in the human body like this but of course the cdc uh, says don't worry it's all in your imagination that very odd picture that has like veins running through it and almost a pattern. Somebody said it looked like a fractal almost, but this is a piece of tissue from the same lady that had the letters, uh, that had the numbers on the tissue. Now that is, Listen I don't even know what to, to do to start to talk about that. The idea that those, the first pictures show that, uh, that lesion covering, that crusty lesion covering peeled off and there are clearly numbers in it what the hell is that all about i don't know but i since since i I, ha, I have had that someone else contacted me and sent me four copies of the video of something in his bathtub which he was taking a picture of that looked like a fish but when he got very close with his lens um he was reading numbers on it and i actually he actually um sent me the video and you can't read the numbers that well but he actually read the numbers from the thing and um, it was M M M L O Q N C F Z. Then there was a, a six-digit number that he wasn't sure of, and then it said twenty-three parentheses U bot and RAM. <laughs> twenty-three <laughs> and what, dear? One more time. It was twenty-three, and there's a one parenthesis that goes the other way, and it says U bot and RAM. Why U B O T and RAM? Got so it. that's pretty funky. <laughs> So, uh, whoops. So, I mean, it's building this thing inside of us and we, uh, and it's connect. It says you bought Ram, like it's, you know, and other people after this shot, they connect to, uh, why wi fi or, you know, Bluetooth signals and like it's building there. I, we played on the first episode of black pill, a video of a, of a teenage girl sticking huge wrenches to her arm and her chest and it's like all magnetic you know uh what do you think they're building matt do you have an idea what was the question oh what do you think they're <laughs> building with this thing that's like these tubules that are like and the uh the shot we also played a video on the first episode uh, we we're talking about the shots and uh mm. there was this monitor at like an airport or something where people were filing through and you, it went bleep bleep. And there was this thing that like sh that bleeped and you could see it on the scanner as they walked through and like, they just, it, it was detecting something inside of them. And then this is all girl... spiritual. Okay. Go ahead. You know what I mean? I think it's all spiritual in the end. I mean, it's all a spiritual battle, right? It, yes. seems, it seems to be in the end. If you're asking me what they're like, I mean, it, I'm just wondering it's if you have any ideas of what they're building. Um, you know, you don't have to have an answer. It's okay. Inside the people? Are you saying inside the people? Yeah, it's constructing this thing <laughs> and it's magnetic and it connects to the wire, it's, to the EMFs and all it's of that. It's something that can um, receive a signal that can um, keep humanity. Okay, so here's the deal. Humanity is supposed to evolve. 
whether we're supposed to ascend into light or whatever, I don't know, but we're supposed to evolve. And as we evolve, the blindfold comes off the right. uh, the training glove, the training wheels come off, you know, the whatever you want to call it. The illusion. And, yeah. And so the, the powers that be that are, you, you know, charging us for energy when it's been free the whole time and whatever, you know, however you want to look at it, you can look at it really spiritual or you can look at it like more monetarily, like if you want to grasp it, because most people can't even grasp evil anyways. Like, like my mom wants to believe in angels, but she won't believe in, in the in demons and the dark side. Huh. It's just like a lot of the world is like that. Like, it's right. like oh, what, oh, how could you think? But they, but, but they believe in, you know, the light side, you know, it's like we live in polarity, we live in duality and right. the, the evil doers in this round of how can we try to control earth and what goes down on earth is, is they're trying to put tech inside of everything biological and prevent an evolution. And if hmm. they, and I believe that earth goes through a cycle where let's just say it's like 20,000 years or something, or I think it's probably way smaller than that. Let's just say it's 5,000 years. So every 5,000 years, like Saturn will come through and then be like prominent and then not, you know, and then it'll come to its whole cycle. Yes, Jupiter then, has returned. Yeah. Right? And so it's a very, There's the very, conjunction of Jupiter. Right. Go ahead. With Saturn and Jupiter. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the very end of it, when it comes back full circle, humanity's supposed to have like learned its lesson and, and like, um, uh, evolved or whatever right. but if we're if we've been locked in a frequency the whole time of like war and blah 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 then when the dark ages return again you know um Be locked into the lockdown then then they then sa satan can kind of be like oh sweet i've got a body right now transhumanism's here whatever and, and then there's they get to they have their little reign of the first few thousand years and then they got to figure it out again but they'll right. be like it's like a chess game you know and at that at that juncture, they'll have like already done it one cycle and they think that they can lock it up. But it's like, have you seen the movie Cloud Atlas? You know, in the movie Cloud Atlas, which is like a weird, like dystopian uh, kind of like was written probably by some like Freemason kind of character. They all are all these things that get attention. Right. And in the end, the spiritual like awakening kind of thing, because they're worried about um the quote-unquote awakening what does that mean ascension what does that mean i mean does, does it mean ascension what does it really mean because we probably give things terms that we don't even know we can't even grasp because we're we don't know what it really right. probably means is like um awareness of like self-awareness of like re, you know the the blindfolds come off like i said and in the movie cloud atlas the awakening or awareness starts to come from um a robot a a, a huh. A Korean waitress right. uh, robot. Yeah. Yeah. Cause humanity like couldn't really pull it off, but like it still happened anyways through, through a robot, you know? Right. And, and so it's like inevitable, yeah. I feel like, even no matter how they, hard they try. But, but, but not to cut you short. So the, right what, what I think that they want to do is maintain humans and keep us like in this locked thing with all of this mind control that they do because it's like why would they invert the peace sign and put it everywhere and have all this dark occult magic with the starbucks logo and the freaking um right. all the car logos are like saturn and saturn and saturn and saturn and like saturated just, in it it's right? crazy or, it's like how right. what why 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 because they're trying to pull out all the stops with word magic and the the maritime well, law and our sovereignty and all that sort of stuff they're right. just trying to buy themselves time so that while, while um, we're supposed to be evolving, we're getting hit with all this stuff, fluoride and all these things. But the end, the end game is like to, to get us to consent to transhumanism because then it's right. like we're robotic and they can like maintain our frequency. Like literally if we've got like chips inside of us, then they can literally maintain our frequency. Like right now they can try with like their um, different – stuff you know <laughs> they've got all sorts of things where they try to ma maintain the frequency of people and they think that they can monitor us and control us and whatnot but that we're still evolving you know they're, they're still scared like like 
at the end of it all, okay. Oh my gosh, the Morgellons are so scary. Everything's so dark. Everything's so kind of. I'm fear-based. trying to do that. We're not no, no, no. That. I'm not. I'm not saying that either. I'm just saying it all seems a little scary. But at the end of the day, we should all be able to really flex on this and be excited and and comprehend that this is a really deep, profound thing that they and they're really like powerful omnipotent evil beings or whatever they're really afraid of us they're right. so afraid of us that they're pulling out all the stops every which way like everything from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep and while we're asleep we're getting hit with like frequencies from all these things and all this sort of stuff they are unbelievably terrified that we will, one of us, just one of us, will come into our true self and show the others the way, and then they'll lose their grip and they'll lose everything because they're like on this house of cards, basically, you know. And it's only a matter of time till it gets shook down. And so that's why they're trying so hard. So yeah, the, they, um, I think the, the the stuff inside the body is to maintain frequency to make it so that the frequency is set on like one radio station so that the tune doesn't get tuned up because we're supposed to be slowly um, ascending in a vibration, whatever that means to you. Right. So um, we are like, we're like in order to, um, in order to control us, they need us to, they've been making us robots with trauma-based mind control for all these years and with this, you know, word magic and contracts and talismans and all this ancient magic. Uh, but they know that they're going to lose control because all we got to do is stop believing the illusions and <laughs> recognize like, oh, yeah, we are living in a free. I do have free will and they can't tell me what to do. And, you know, like and then all of a sudden we don't go vote and we don't go like believe what they say and they're then they're just crazy madman on the train you can just walk past them like i'm gonna go do real life now and we could all just drop this idea of government and the idea of like you know rockefeller needs to give me my medicine and like all these lies of like it's really like it's very easy to just be done with all that <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm sure it's hard to be responsible for yourself and grow your own food and like do your own, get your own energy and all this, but there is ways to do it. And it's all there with, with like, you know, it, it grows, comes from the earth and it's there for us. And as long as we don't let them steal it, like our consciousness or the earth out from underneath us, uh, then we can live free. You know, we can do it now. And there are ways of, uh, trying to help expel this these materials that are building up inside of us, we can live a cleaner life. Uh, we can, you know, there's, uh, Freeman mentioned a couple things earlier, and uh, I wanted to maybe ask you before you left, Matt, I know we're keeping you up late, but are there any, uh, anything that you've been told or that you have heard? Like, I know your Sparrow gear is good for, um, for blocking EMF radiation. And that is protection, and you offer that, and people can find that sparrowgear.com. Uh, do you have anything else that you've learned uh, that can help to protect us or get this stuff out of us? Uh, yeah, the body is a, an amazing thing, and the body can heal. Um, nothing is more powerful than the healing powers of the human body. Like, and and what's so amazing is even like the power of placebo and how like right. we design ourselves right like if you want to be psychosomatic on something just start thinking about like my toe hurts it'll hurt like oh my god it's crazy you can do it all so chelation is a cool thing to try to learn how to get the toxins out of your body but more so it's like i'm all about terrain and how you treat your body Right. And environmental toxins, you know, you don't want to be around all that sort of stuff. So, like, your environment's important. But, like, if you've got mercury in your mouth, get rid of it. Right. Number one, you know, that's my first. And then secondly, like, get mineralized. We're mineral deficient. Um, everybody loves their sugar or their coffee or whatever or just your life of getting to where you're at you've become mineral deficient your body needs 104 your body wants 104 minerals each day to burn through 
and it doesn't get that. The soil is mineral deficient. Or the food that we get doesn't have all the minerals in it. Um, I take a, a supplement that's um, ground up Irish sea moss and bladderwrack and burdock, those three things, um, wildcrafted or, and organic. I get it on Amazon. You can find it on the internet. Those three things, um, bladderwrack, burdock, and sea moss, which is like a, a sea algae kind of thing. Um, it has the 104 bioavailable minerals that you need. It's bioavailable. So um, the, if you get an A to Z min, um, vitamin that's like synthetic, they're, they're not bioavailable because it didn't come from a plant. And also there's different um, detox chelation things like um, zeolite and bentonite clay and diatomaceous earth and all that sort of stuff. That stuff's all fine and dandy, but it's it's in the end, it's rocks and it's not very bioavailable, you know, and um, I'm all about put get, putting your body to work and let it, it detox itself if you can get your body healthy and happy like people when they meet me they're like literally think sometimes if i'm on a good day that i'm in my 20s and i'm 42 you know because i'm going backwards i used to drink 40s i used and people used to ask me when the baby was due because i had such a belly and i was like dr smoking new ports and had i looked bad you know i cigarettes i smoke cigarettes i drank bad booze and now I'm like, I don't drink and I'm like, really, I meditate and stuff. And I'm like, I treat my body pretty well. And then also I just awesome. learned about biofulvic and I just ordered some of this and it makes a lot of sense. Um, and I just learned about it. This is not a friend or me or anything, but biofulvic.com, um, bio and then F-U-L-V-I-C. And it's fulvic minerals that are like, it's like this volcanic algae from the sea vents of um, the ocean or whatever, and it's bioavailable. So minerals that are bioavailable, meaning they come from plants, that's what I highly recommend because when you're mineral efficient, the opposite of mineral deficient, when you're mineral deficient, you're absorbing things from your environment, right. your toxins. Like osmosis, right? Like mm -hmm. if you, yeah, right. so like your body is seeking metal and then when it comes across this aluminum in the air and it goes, it's like, oh yeah, sweet. And it just sucks it all up. It's like, yeah. It's yeah. like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough magnesium in my bones or calcium or all these other things, you know, and right. this resembles it kind of, let me absorb it because right. your body's not thinking that chemtrails are in the air, you know, but, but if you have all your minerals and your body's all up to speed and not deficient, it doesn't even need to absorb the toxins from the environment or the food or whatever the water it's just like no i'm i'm good i don't need to absorb anything to my bones my bones are are nice and solid because i gave it what it needs so minerals um, mineral dense foods are organ meat um fish eggs like caviar um there's this uh, bison liver you can get stuff like that you know do a little research and find grass-fed good source i get amish um i get amish raw grass-fed cheese Actually, this whole cheese thing is a, a little thing. I got to talk to you about the cheese thing for a minute while I have you on the air. Please, yeah, talk about it. So the it's really wild, and I don't mean to be like Debbie Downer or, or whatever, but the cheese is pretty toxic nowadays because these cows get so many inoculations. They're getting mad cow disease, which is actually just um, manganese. It's chemtrails being sprayed, but manganese being sprayed in the chemtrails makes cows all crazy. And, um, and they're going to they, be getting MRNA. Getting, they're getting they're going to be getting the mRNA shots and all this sort of stuff. And so what happens to these cows that are just loaded up with all these vaccines? It's stored in the fats, um, which is comes out in the milk and the cheese and the dairy. Um, and those fats are the lipids, and they're really um, easily permeable. And so the toxins store up in there, and then we right. get the toxins, and we don't want the toxins. And so I started thinking that I was lactose intolerant because I couldn't really ingest much cheese my buddy put me on to this amish cheese company in pennsylvania and he was like i guarantee you you can eat their ice cream and i was like bro if i can eat their ice cream i'll eat my hat and huh. and i can eat their ice cream bro that's crazy i didn't really awesome. eat my hat. you know it's just a saying no, so anyways you. i'm just kidding so then um i get their cheese i get their ice cream and i'm learning that not only am i getting their i'm like all about the raw because it's it's like because right. the pasteurization have, like kills everything. Yeah, you have the, the digestive stuff. enzymes, all the stuff. I'm eating, right. even eating really clean raw organs and really clean raw um, meat, raw cow meat. And I know it sounds crazy, but the 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 raw meat really helps clean out your body. And what the raw 
Amish dairy does is, believe it or not, it's like the most detoxing thing. It'll even help you if you've gotten or know someone that has gotten accidentally gotten the boosters or the jabs or whatever, because this it's the opposite of having the toxic, the bad cheese. Um, and and I, I encourage you to get the best grass fed stuff you can get, you know, but you're still right. going to be, you're still going to be getting some inoculated cows unless they're Amish. Right. Like because of the fun. law, right? Yeah. It's why Amish it's have lawyers that can fight that off and they're separated. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if you live somewhere upstate New York or something and you can just like contact your local. I'm actually in Ohio. Cow. They like, they're yeah, all you over. got some cows somewhere. Like, I mean, you don't have to have an Amish neighbor. Right. Maybe, you know, someone who might not eat the raw meat. Like that might in, you know, there might be parasites and yeah, that's uh, what everyone says, but there that's, that's a, a fallacy. Like, like if they're okay. fresh, it, it depends on, you know, when was it cut open or whatever, but like, um, well, people here, a lot of people like it's Ohio. There's a lot of deer and like a lot of, there's a lot of people living, uh, they'll fill up many freezers and they'll, they don't have to go to the store to get that stuff. And I'm sure that there's like chemtrails on the grass that they're eating or whatever. I mean, it, yeah, never totally mind the raw beef thing. That's that's out there. But the raw. Let me just finish the, the raw. I'm dairy. sorry, I don't mean it. Like it's it. cool. It's cool. It's just a new thing, and and it's and it's giving me a lot of energy. And I, I had a broken arm, and because of all the opiates and everything, I was given in the hospital. I couldn't. I was so demineralized. I couldn't put on muscle, and so and I was really B de, vitamin vitamin B deficient. And I started eating raw steaks with this raw cheese, raw honey, and and it, it really helped. So it's not. I'm not all raw. Like trust me, I love you know. A burger and all that jazz, but <laughs> to check it out, the yeah. raw Amish cheese because these these um, very permeable lipids are toxin free. They absorb toxins in your body, so you eat the clean cheese and it just sucks up like toxins because the toxins love the cheese. So like because it's a fat and it's stored in the lipids and that's why it gets it. stored in your fat and yeah. people that drink those sodas all day and they eat the mm -hmm. crap and the, the they get all puffy fat because they're trying to get toxins the body's trying to get it away from their organs you know mm -hmm. but please continue so it's, no, it's the like, lip, it like it's like liposomal um if it's if it's in your body or in the cow, it's a liposomal like toxin extraction system, but it's like stored in the fats in your body. But if you eat the cheese, it's a liposomal toxin removal system. So, so this cheese, cheese as it goes through your yeah. body, it's mm -hmm. like a sponge and it's taking mm -hmm. stuff with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So that's my that's my biggest like detox methodology recently is um, mineralization, um, healthy like healthy lifestyle. Yeah. You know. Right. Um, the Amish cheese, um, company that I go for, oh, you don't need the brand cause it doesn't matter, but you can look for different people, whatever, but right. just like call your talk, know your farmer, you know, I mean, right. everything's got to get more localized and smaller anyways. And knowing where your stuff and your food came from is important and like try not to eat as much processed food. And actually I, st I ended up seed oils. This, this is so hard for people. State. I know right. it's really hard for people, but I stopped eating, um, flour yeah. yeah it's crazy yeah my wife's the same way she's she doesn't and she we're trying to give our son gluten-free bread and like because i'm just know. not trying to eat things that are processed as much i'm eating more right. just like simple foods and and all that and it's just like at first it's a pain but then you're, you're honoring your your health and i try to go to the sauna often as well um, as much as I can. That makes and, sense because your and, sweat is a is a system for getting that stuff out. Everything bad, it gets it's a yeah. But yeah. I mean, like uh, the thing is, is that you're saying the cow's milk, uh, the breast is a way of ex of getting rid of those toxins. So like the bad cows that have been jabbed, it's like putting it into the milk to try to get it out of them. Uh, I'm sorry, my dog is making noise right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, you know, please, uh, th these are very great. Uh, thank you for bringing these. Uh, um, continue. Mm -hmm. So it's just important for people to grasp um, different little concepts, like um, for every molecule of sugar that you ingest, your body burns up 54 molecules of magnesium. For every gram of sugar you ingest, you need 54 grams of magnesium to counteract that, to not be deficient in, in your magnesium. So sugar really is something you kind of want to like mitigate and, and maybe try raw honey or maple syrup instead. And 
the more processed, the more refined things are, like like that sugar, like think about like actual just sugar. Like it got it had to get made and processed. And like the more ingredients right. and the more things that you're consuming, the more your body has to really work to figure it out. And I when I started learning about enzymes, you have di- like your body has to create digestive enzymes with the pancreas if it doesn't have if the food doesn't have its digestive enzymes in it. And if the food was cooked over like 115 degrees, then the digestive enzymes are broken down and you have to make your own. So your body has to work really hard to digest things that aren't raw. So the more often that you can just eat like an apple or something raw that your body doesn't have to really figure out, then the better it is for your body to assimilate and process it without like having to stress your body out. And I think minerals are really key though. That's I'm done talking. Thank you for listening. But min- no, no. minerals... Minerals, minerals, minerals. I think that's like one of the most important things for people to sink their teeth into. And and not those like rocks. Like I've met old ladies that they like take the, the like mineral supplements that are like uh, fluid, but they're it's just like ro- essentially rocks, like um, not plant-based. And they have like calcium. They can't bend their fingers and stuff because they have calcium deposits in their joints. And they're saying they think it came from that, a lifetime of that. So you know, mind it. And, and I think that finding bioavailable meaning bioavailable means plant based. And you can take something that's not bioavailable and feed it to plants and then eat the plant because the plant up took it and turned it into bioavailable, you know, but you can't ingest certain things because we want to ingest like plants. Humans do essentially, (laughs) and you know, um, things that eat plants like animals, but not, um, minerals that are too dense like diatomaceous earth are these little diatoms first i thought they were really cool but they're just like they're seashell like little organisms they're really they're rocks they're rocks and I well that's that's to, to kill the parasites really because it like, yeah i get that yeah, yeah. but i think that there's natural ways to get your body to be able to get those parasites out like that cheese right. and stuff like that or just really healthy diet like people want to take the diatomaceous earth, which is like rocks, but then still eat pizza and smoke cigarettes and drink beer. It's like, guess what? Like all that yeast is what did it. It's like, if you check your lifestyle, you could eliminate all that stuff. Like stop feeding the freaking parasites and they'll die. Like just they're slow and steady though. They they're, you know, they've been living off your lifestyle. Just saying like, not everything's gotta be a guilt trip, but. Oh, but that makes perfect sense. And that's a black pill that people got to recognize. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's perfect for the show. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah. uh, I know that it's late and you, you got to go do your life. And uh, we can, we'll let you go if you'd like to. Um, we, we're going to play uh, one more. We're going to play one more clip from our friend Leah Boone, who uh, she talks about how like she kind of wraps up the military. And uh, you can you can stick around if you like. Or, uh, we're going to do that and then uh, talk about see talk about that one and uh and then we're going to end it with a song from our friend mac mark passio and his band the founders and it's going to encapsulate the idea of stratospheric aerosol geoengineering this book is called called behold Behold a pale Pale horse 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 by william cooper william cooper was an officer of naval intelligence who became a whistleblower regarding the classified documents that he read in his military career Let's review this information and make some correlations. I'm going to read and paraphrase. I read top secret documents which explain that silent weapons for quiet wars is the doctrine adopted by the policy committee of the Bilderberg Group during its first known meeting in 1954. A copy was found in 1969 in the possession of naval intelligence. The following document was found in an IBM copier that had been purchased at a surplus sale in 1986. Silent weapon technology has evolved from operations research, a strategic and tactical methodology developed in England during World War II. The purpose was to study the strategic and tactical problems of air and land defense with the objective of effective use of limited military resources against foreign enemies. They discovered the same methods may be used for controlling a society 
but better tools were necessary. Social engineering requires the correlation of great amounts of constantly changing economic information. High-speed data processing was necessary, which could race ahead of the society and predict when the society would arrive for capitulation. The computers at the time were too slow, but they developed the simplex method of linear programming, the transistor, the great expansion of the computer field by reducing space and power requirements. With these three inventions, it was possible for them to control the whole world with the push of a button. I want to note the collusion of the Air Force in their alliance to the elite and the Bilderberger Group. The Air Force's technological shock testing analysis became the model for global electronic slavery and domination. It was an Air Force copy machine that held a found copy of Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. It was the Air Force that participated in the 9-11 charade and the Air Force going along with the further charade of people going into space. Who is at the epicenter of non-disclosure regarding the high-technology UFO craft being witnessed in this realm? Who do we think is chemtrailing us on a daily basis? The Air Force has dominion over the airspace. Are they responsible for what is likely the true source of widespread illness? Published governmental geoengineering programs admit they are spraying barium, aluminum, and strontium. They are raining heavy metals down upon us almost on a daily basis. The Corona Commanders Conference established in 1944 meets three times a year to discuss the direction and management of the Air Force. One of the main team players in the War on Humanity has the same name as the tool of their destruction. Incidentally, the Air Force adopted the doctrine of establishing total domination in cyber warfare in 2006, now handed over as a department encapsulated in Space Force, aka Cyberspace Force. Their cyber warrior duties include the mission of perception control. The U.S. Air Force secures the electromagnetic realm as defined in their memos. That also means the 5G electromagnetic spectrum. 5G is a military operation and part of the meta matrix of control and new infrastructure needed for global domination, control, and oppression. The Air Force are agents of the dark occult, and they've been flying under the radar long enough. I do recognize this document based upon documents on admission as a formal declaration of war by the Illuminati upon the citizens of the United States of America. I acknowledge that a state of war exists and has existed between the citizens of the United States and the Illuminati aggressor. Based upon this recognition, I present to you that the peaceful citizens of this nation are fully justified in whatever steps may be necessary, including violence. Let's correct that to force since self-defense is never a violation to identify, counterattack, and destroy the enemy. I base the statement upon the God-given right of any peaceful people to defend themselves against attack and destruction by an enemy waging war against them. I cite the principles outlined in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, and the fully recognized and acknowledged historical precedents that have served as the justification for the destruction of tyrants. He's referring to 1776, 
The Bill of Rights is the document worth mentioning. It's a reiteration of your unalienable, inherent, God-given rights. You were gifted your life, your body, your consciousness by the creator of the universe, and you can do anything on God's green earth that you want to, so long as your behavior does not violate the rights of or willfully harm another sentient being. That's what your rights are. And should someone try to remove your rights, you have the God-given right to protect those gifts and defend yourself. That is the end-all, be-all to freedom and sovereignty in the universe. Humanity has every right to defend themselves from the dark occult Illuminati ruling class and the war on humanity. It's not just a right, it's an obligation to protect the gifts that were given by the creator of the universe. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness via the universal principles of natural law, God's law. The only thing that can stop the inductance, the transfer of energy, wealth, freedom, and life is resistance. Freedom is the right that must be protected from wrong. The future of freedom is in your hands. Be the resistance. I love that. Yeah, Leah did a beautiful job on that. Yeah. So, uh, Leah, our friend, uh, she, you can find that at occultorigins.com. And she uh, she started out her work with a, a, like a fantastic video. There's a lot more to it. Uh, I clipped out the, the relevant parts here. But it is the Air Force and it is the Corona program. And they are spraying us like bugs. Uh, you know, I, I, if you, I don't know if you guys uh, have anything to say about that, uh, how it all connects to their, <clears throat> their cyber grid and how everything in the air connects to everything. You know, it's a way of controlling everything. And those frequencies are the domain of the Air Force. And it's been a military operation since the beginning. What do you guys have to say about that? Anybody? Uh, I no had problem. This, uh, okay, go ahead. I had this little realization hmm. um, when we were watching that video and it was showing the little, all the little um, Morgellons strands that are you know it's tripping me out how how snake like they are right and and you know there's this whole snake thing i'm I'm still like um the jab was two it started as two like a snake bite you know like it's teeth are two of them right and then there was the whole thing about the um the snake venom right and yeah that whole bullshit came out and that was kind of interesting but it got me thinking about gi joe and um for some reason gi joe always sticks with me because they G.I. Yeah, Joe came from Barbie dolls. Comic book. started with Barbie, which is another occult bullshit. Thing. Right. That's an interesting thing, too. But in those yeah. comic books, it predicted a lot of this stuff, like chemtrails and nanotechnology. Right. They, it, a lot of that was embedded in, in the G.I. Joe. But look at the G.I. world. Joe was, you know, I'm sorry. It was written by the military, gave them a lot of that information. Like they're just doing what they're told to say. Go ahead. Dude, not but the yeah, I could go on and we could do a whole nother thing about GI Joe. But <laughs> yeah, we should. the thing that the thing that popped in my head was um you were asking, like, what are they doing? Why are they doing this? Like, where what's it building inside of them? And I yeah. and I started thinking about that S, and um for some reason the world r- real estate came into my head. <laughs> real estate, like they're getting real estate. Like, you know, if you actually win a, win, want to win a war, you got to put boots on the ground. They're actually getting inside of you. You know, it's one thing to just get a cloud cover. It's another thing to get the food in you. But actually getting their real estate, you know, yeah. it's their state now right. because they're getting they're really getting yeah. their S, their snake state in your body. Yeah. They're really getting their snake state in your body. And that's like a whole nother level. Yeah. And 
you know, it trips me it's out. It's like too, the Pink Floyd song, like the worms, like, oh, uh, you know, the, the worms are attacking his brain. And like, uh, oh, so yeah, I remember that Star Trek worm, when, your it, honor, when they like put that the, worm in there. The guy's a big it... asshole and he's a judge and he's like shitting all over everything. And his he's called Worm, your like your honor, worm, like they're all worms. Like it's it's really and Marilyn Manson sang about that, too. Like, you know, uh, turning into the worm it's really sick uh, you know go scary, ahead scary nasty stuff wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no but i mean to put it to put it back to a, a positive note you know um you you can't really be separate from what you're made from right and how i mean i have a lot of theories about this whole ai thing and maybe where it all come from and i have this interesting thing but i don't want to get into all that what i want to do is just kind of like end on a positive note of even though they're trying to get their real state inside of you Hmm. we're actually made of god you know that's right reality is god right that's god is reality okay and god is morality ultimately right natural law that's what natural law is it's morality being defined by reality and that's what god is so reality is morality Right. Right. So it's kind of like when you think about a Venn diagram, so they're creating this vibration that is an assault against the morality. Like they're, but it's within, God. you know, like a Venn diagram. The big circle is God, right? This is within God, hmm. you know. So it can't overtake what it's made of. You know what I mean? Right. Even though they're creating this AI, this separate thing that's trying to create its own thing, it's within reality, you right. know. And reality is God, and and so you can't make something out of nothing. You know, you can't make nothing out of, you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm saying I that. I do right, know but, what you mean. But yeah. the ultimate lesson is kind of like what Matt was saying in so many ways. It is a spiritual mm-hmm. thing. And all we have to do is connect to what really is real. And, and we're going to be on the side of good of, of ultimately. We good. already are, man. It's great. We That's are, what we're doing here today. Like, yeah. it, it can't win. You right. Know, because reality has gone. That's right. <laughs> And our, tr- you know, we're, we're broadcasting the truth frequency. Somehow this is going to hopefully hit some people's ears that need to hear it. They're going to, maybe they'll stumble across this online someday and they're going to do something, you know, like we're, we're putting the ideas in your head. We're taking, like, we're making you think or trying to help you to think about these ideas and, you know, really look at them. Uh, these, these are black pills that they were bringing to you every week or every month, I guess. Uh, um like it's um the awareness itself is helping and it's creating vibrations for the future and the more that we speak about it the more that we can affect other people's brains and what they choose to do with the future like this is how we affect the future is with our voice and that's the best of this you know that's the best that we can do right here. And we're, I think it's a fantastic, like, I'm so proud of this today. And, um, you know, I, I think that this, you know, like what Freeman did for you, it inspired you and what, what he's, you know, what other people, what you do will inspire others and they will choose their path to further the, the right vibrations. And, uh, Yeah. I mean, it, it's going to work out but like we're going to have to. Every, everybody's working. If everybody's, you know, towing the line, then it's he's light. Many hands make light work. So as long as we're all doing what we can, the best that we can, and we live like honestly and, and you know, do our best, it's going to work out. It's going to be good. I think I'm on a positive kick myself, even though this is Black Pill Digest. You know, it's the awareness that we bring in and the awareness is light and it's good. And, um, you know, some of that stuff is pretty scary. I know we started with Disney and we ended it with Morgellons and looking at those fibers that they're pulling out. It, I mean, it's sick. And I know we kind of brought everybody down a pretty dark rabbit hole. And um, and we didn't even get scratched the surface. I know we've been here for all four hours now. And yeah. Uh, Thank you guys for, for being here for all this time. And uh, if there's anything else that you all want to say before we, uh, like, I do want to, sh- like, play that song. Yeah, and, we will. 
And um, yeah, so go ahead, James, if you want to say something. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, like what you were saying, you know, it's the black bill digest. You know that 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 word digest is very important. So we're, our goal here is to kind of unveil the doom and gloom stuff, but to in a way to provide solutions to empower you to uh, know what's going on and to inspire critical thinking uh, abilities within you that are innate within you and, you know, your latent abilities that maybe just need to be tapped into a little bit more, you know? So that's our goal here is not to scare anybody or to, right. you know, not, not to like, not to get anybody all, you know, fired up like that, but the type of fire we want to try to um, breathe into people is the fire of action that you're not going to let these things continue to happen to you and be a part of the, be a part of the resistance, you know, be a part of speaking up to the very least, what you can do is speak up. And then from there, you, you know, what you got to learn, sure. But then apply the knowledge to your life and actually do something with it. You could hold all of it to yourself. You could be Scrooge McDuck and have all the gold in your vault. But what good is that going to do? You can right. you, you, you can't you, eat gold. Like you're not you gonna need to apply it to your life. Yes, you can. You need to actually do. You know, you have to have good actions and be the change that you want to see in the world. You know, like you got to all of this information about the chemtrails, and we didn't even touch on half of of what we really set out to tonight. But yeah, you, know, you could go and like grow your own food. You could like it all comes down to your actions. So. Um, with that in mind, that's what we need to do to press forward. We need to keep that in mind at all times, in all places. Every action that you do has an effect on the world around you and what kind of world do you want to live in? So we need to have actions that are going to be a reflection of the type of world that we want to live in. And uh, that's our goal here is to help people really think instead of just being told what to think, we want to try to inspire people to, you know, I can't change anybody's mind, but I can sure as hell present information that might inspire somebody to change their own mind. Okay. And that's, that's really what I'm trying to get at here. Another thing that I want to bring up before we leave tonight, and, and it's very important that I do, is the how to become the true media uh, skill, skill sharing seminar. It's coming up in 2023. All three of us here tonight, uh, well, not, I'm sorry, I said that like it's only been the three of us, but the three of us here now, um, we've all gone through this course and it's taught us what we needed to know to be able to bring this information to the, uh, to the current battlefield because we are, it is a battlefield. Right. We need to use the internet. We need to use this technology while it's still at our disposal in order to turn the tide of that battle it's a spiritual battle in a material plane and we need to be able to do that mark right. passio is able to teach what he knows about um about technology in a way where it's it, he's what he's doing is he's is he's able to uh train people to be content creators and that's what we need we need to be the true media we need to be the voice that pushes back against all the lies and the corruption that is being, you know, put out there on, on a daily basis in this country and in this world. So it's a, like it says on the slide here, an intensive 23 week technology skill sharing seminar hosted by Mark Passio. The enrollment starts on, uh, on April 1st of 2023. And, um, the schedule is every Monday evening between 8 p.m. and 8, 11 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Okay, so this is about being a content creator. This is about actually using the, the knowledge. It's about actually using the, uh, the skill of creating content, effectively communicating your knowledge back out into the world, so that you can be an agent of change for the better in, in this in this crazy fucked up situation that we have that 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 is uh, that is you know in front of us. So if you think that that if you think that describes you, 
if you think that you can do this work, then go to howtobecomethetruemedia.com. Uh, maybe bookmark it for now since en enrollment hasn't opened. And just keep an eye out on that because um, this is this is where th this is where the the battle is going to be fought. Okay, and then and then you know, uh, of course, like I said before, you know, you got to actually really try to live your life uh, in a, in a, in a moral way, you know? Right. Um, so other than that, I really don't have, I, I really don't have anything much else to say, uh, this evening. Okay. Um, I, I really just want to make sure that people, I, I wanted to make sure that when we, we left tonight, cause it's a heavy topic and a lot of people shrug their shoulders and they go, Oh, this is nothing. No, it is something it's in right. the, the air. This is something that I don't think anybody really impressed upon the audience tonight. The air touches everything. That's right. It touches everything. everything. The whole so world. Right. Whatever it is that's going on up there, all of this information, even if we're wrong about exactly what it is, something's going on and the air touches everything. And with that, I... Exactly. I kind of just, you know, and our bodies are sponges. It takes in everything from the environment. Like your, you know, yeah. your skin absorbs things from the air. Like uh, the sweat glands are an open porous. Uh, so uh, it's like you you are susceptible to their new technologies of dominance of the whole world. If you are, if you breathe air, you should care, right? So this is like we're, I care. And I think that it is one of the biggest black pill to deal with. Like people are like, oh, that chemtrail doesn't exist. Like, what, huh? Joe Rogan said it doesn't exist. Like, oh, whatever. I believe that dude, you know, but they don't want to look at it. They don't want to recognize that they've been spraying us like bugs for the last since the 80s you know uh yeah. it's and it's evil they don't care about like look at what they did in vietnam they don't care that they're killing many generations and the dioxins stayed in the soil like they don't care they want to kill and it's that's it's if it's not obvious by now then wake the f up everybody come on now <laughs> you know so yeah. speaking of sprayed like bugs uh i wanted to yeah we'll play say, that yeah we, we can play that it starts with a i i um i added a, a photograph of what it looks like and i took this personally in nashville uh in 2017 at a walmart parking lot so this is a real photograph and i didn't alter it to make it look funny there is a pattern in the sky that is instantly recognizable, and it even has a chem bow. It's a, like a chemtrail rainbow because the sun is hitting at a right angle. And Chris, do you want to say anything before we go? Uh, we're just going to play it out with that video. Uh, do you want yeah. to say goodbye? I'll, I'll just say um, thanks so much for having me, guys. And um, I'll just encourage people, like, take all that black pill tough stuff to digest, um, tough to digest stuff. Yeah. as inspiration to be more of a hero for other people, the way that Freeman and Matt are heroes to me. That's and right. Wim Hof shows that whatever they're spraying on him, he's kicking ass anyway. You know, that guy's going to jump in the ice and take a bunch of deep breaths and come out stronger for it. And we can do that too. And I think the power of the breath and the power of water right. are, are some of the best cures out there and, and um, exercise. And um, I'm, I think he's right, too, with the fulvic minerals and the other things Matt was talking about. But I think breath and learning to be good at breathing right. and taking your water really seriously are two things that will um, allow you to become a hero and um, ride over this wave. And don't let it don't let it knock you down. Frickin um, surf this wave, you know, that's right. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to say that distilled water will help to leach out those chemicals as well. Everybody's like, oh, you got to have mineral water so that it doesn't leach you out. Can, you can get your minerals separately. Take the full right, minerals and then drink it. Have 
drink yeah. distilled water. Exactly. The distilled water helps to clean it out. Like that's another, uh, we only drink distilled. We, you can get a distiller and you can put it on your table in your countertop and you can make distilled water all day. It just runs and it's very efficient and it's good to store up to have. Um, and breathing air, I do notice that I, I notice many times that I'm not even taking deep enough breaths. Like I'm just shallowly, barely breathing. And I have to remind myself, like trying uh, to do six count, yeah. count to like six or seven in right. and six or seven out. That's yeah. kind of what a lot of books are, are leaning towards that are recommending, you know, just longer breaths. So. That's very interesting, brother. And thank you anyway, for joining. Thanks us. so much. And yeah, I'm, we could talk all night. Let's hear the I'm music. So glad, I'm so glad that you joined us, and we're very thankful to have you here. And you're a brother Fantastic. to us. Thank you. Oh, yeah, one last thing before, before I forget. Before, yeah, before yeah. I forget. Um, yeah. Next. So I'm very happy about this. Uh, and next week. Uh, ne oh, next Wickman? week. Um, uh, next week on A Hitchhiker's Guide to Truth, I'm having Etienne de la Buisi squared on. Again. Again, and we're going to be discussing volume five of this book, Government, the Biggest Scam in History Exposed. Okay. Fantastic. And it, that book is finally out. So, volume five of that book is finally out. It's up to date and it will be covering more in depth of the COVID 19 scam demic right. and uh, some more interesting stuff. So, tune in next week, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a hitchhiker's guide to truth and uh, to get in the chat and maybe we can field some questions with uh with at the end de la buisi squared and he's, uh he's, he's great. man he's he's great and yeah. so and oh but he's gonna you know, be on this show in march yeah he's gonna be our guest we're gonna be talking yeah. about the media so this is right this on. is a very important this is a very important book to me because um just over a year ago this is the book that i i read on air this is where i got my start live stream yeah. so it's it's oh, very man. important that we it's uh, jam packed very information oh, yeah, dense yeah, it's, like, it's a great book to hand somebody and it's got yeah. it all cheap and on your coffee table you know oh, right. it's a great coffee table book right in fact it's gotten me in trouble with family members they've come over <laughs> <laughs> they, they've come over for different What's family this? events yeah, it's they the truth. It. You should look at it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> truth hurts. Yeah, it's right. It's better bill. I just anti-government, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Aren't you? You <laughs> should be if you're a moral person. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're uh, they're honest. I'm the weirdo. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. Oh, you like violence and tyranny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you like that? <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I how's also, that leather taste on your tongue? Yeah, yeah. right. Keep, yeah, licking the boot while it chokes your neck. Yeah, mm. um, I wanted to bring up for my show uh, sure. coming up in, well, it's I guess it's not my show, but uh, I'm going to be a guest with Mark Devlin uh, at the beginning of next month on his show. And we're going to be talking about uh, Full Metal Jacket and what that movie was really talking about. And... Uh, I guess I'll explain it on the show and hopefully everybody will come and listen to his show is good vibrations podcast. And it should be like the first week of February. I don't know when he's going to get it out, but we're, we're recording on the first of February. And uh, also I plan on having uh, Hans utter to talk more on wake the dead to talk more about culture creation. And we're planning on taking a look at uh, the lyrics of certain songs and how the, the mind control operation has been in effect. Uh, really going to dig into those topics and that with, with Hans. He's really got a lot to offer in that realm. And so we're happy to have him on Wake the Dead and continue the conversation. So, and so, you know, look out for that. There's, there's more coming and we're going to, uh, there's going to be more Black Pill uh, as well. We've been doing one a month. I think that's a pretty good pace right yet. And uh, thank you guys for, being here and i'm infinitely grateful that we're making this happen and uh i hope it's sending the right truth vibrations into the world and god bless you play that video james good night everybody thanks for joining us on black pill digest this next song is about the heavy metals that people are getting up in planes every fucking day and spraying on our heads spraying into our water supplies spraying into the soil 
This is a program of eugenics. And they want to call it some scientific bullshit like stratospheric aerosol geoengineering or solar radiation management. You know what I call it? I call it that we're being sprayed like bugs. <laughs>